That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Fairly alarmed here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to MOTM Reviews, where we look into some of Hollywood's most cinematic supernovas and some that are not so brightly lit. Uh, you can always find this tournament of a podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Spotify. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G, and I'm happy to bring back to the show, Brian. Hey, how's it going, everybody? How's it going, everybody? Good morning to you. It's a doozy, what's a doozy? Wherever you're listening, I hope that you're having a good one. Thanks if, for having me back, Mike. How of, you doing? Of course, man. You know, I'm copacetic, man. That means to the good, bro. I'm doing all right. Yeah, oh man. Doing all right. Doing all right. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah, you know I could do that for just hours. Like when Same I here. get started, it's like all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Let's do it to infinity, right? Yes, absolutely. So what's going on this morning? What what are we what we're are we talking, doing? Man, we're reviewing a film, dude. A, a film. A film. You know, I've never like, heard of such a thing. No, nah, man. There's there's movies and then there's cinema. And then there's films, you know, it's, it's like uh, Freddy Got Finger. It's a movie, right? But Metropolis is like a cinema. But this is a film. It's a film. It's a film. That... So as a film and a movie goes, let me ask you, is there a time, a time limit on, on these? Is, is there like, you know, can a short be a film and a movie? Depends on the quality of the of the creative property it's not the time that makes it a, a film a cinema or a movie it's the quality the quality of the creative of the uh of the product man. so simpsons the movie is definitely a movie it's a not movie a, that, not it's a li- film it says it in the title <laughs> that is a movie excellent they knew All exactly right. what they were going to be doing and film critic is just a, a, a show that's yeah, it's not a film or a movie but so. like Lady Bird is a cinema uh. Yes, the going to it's like going out to the theater. Yeah, the theater. I'm the gonna, theater. I'm going to go view a cinema. Absolutely. You know? No popcorn. Absolutely. No, no drinks. Popcorn. No. A little you small there, brochure. Maybe a little very thin cigarette. You know. And well, now you're talking back in the day. Like, yeah, man. If you try to smoke in a theater, you today, get shot. You, <laughs> hey, you, you might. You get tased. You absolutely <laughs> might. Now, nowadays, uh, the, uh, the the theater. Uh, custodians have tasers and shit dude. Let, let me ask you and i don't want to call you out you know i don't know what you move cinemia or what you use cinemia movie pass whatever the case may be but are you a, 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 a take take the treats into the movie type of guy bro or, it depends or on the squad you stop you know what oh i'm not above it <laughs> real talk i'm not above it like the funniest thing in the world is that when I went to go see Black Panther, you know, everybody walked in, clean tables. When everybody walked out, I saw buckets of chicken and shit, and people brought hot sauce to the theater <laughs> and left it there. Cats have two-liter sodas. Like, how would you sneak a two-liter soda into a movie theater? Do you think they the the concession people care? Like, when they're checking the per, you into the The people the movie, working there the people don't give a shit. Physically working there. They don't care. You walk in with a two-liter soda. It's security like, that cares. Yeah, they just have a two-liter. Soda. No, like only people who care are the actual cats who own the theater. Yeah, the people who work there can care less. Well, I have to be honest. A two liter of soda in movie in movie money is like that's like twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, like thirty five dollars. You're, you're breaking a C note on that shit. I right? think a twenty is is very generous. So yeah. at any rate, any what? rate, let's talk about what we're reviewing. This film, right? This film. this masterpiece of of uh, of celluloid. This came back, this came out, this debuted maybe at the best time it possibly could have, you know, right at the peak of how hype it could possibly have gotten. Oh my goodness. I mean, it was madness. Everybody was crazy. Quarters were flying. I mean, at the, you know, it couldn't have come out at a better time. Like 
1995 is the year that this film came out. Arcade still existed. Arcade though. still existed. Directed by Paul W. Paul W. S. Anderson. I want to make sure I have that distinction. This is not directed by the guy who made The Geely Limited or Isle of Dogs. You know what I mean? This is definitely one of those movies that is legit one of a kind in an all-time classic. We're talking about Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! I could just do the beat all day. This I have this a fun, damn movie. I have a fun fact about that before yeah. we get started. Yeah. I just want to say that that little um, um, intro and all the music throughout the course, probably one of the best like house type tracks. I didn't know what house was until I saw this movie. Well, there was Bad Boy Bill and Bobby D sets the night on the, 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 the Chicago stuff, you yeah, know, man. city stuff. That's, that's but a, you know. Mortal Kombat made made house like, well, what's this? It was Mortal Kombat, and this was before Blade, mind you. Oh, that had excellent house music, absolutely. By like the Crystal Method and stuff like that, you absolutely. Know what I'm but, but this was before that. I won a talent show dancing uh, with another person, a, a young lady. I uh, won a talent show with a young lady dancing to this song, and it was absolutely incredible, I remember. And I just want to say, for the record, that's a fun little fact for this podcast. Absolutely, man. Hey, that's uh, that's pretty dope, dude. Like, this, You have history with this film just based on the music alone. Just based on the music. I remember performing in flips and roundabouts. That was, you know, young Brian. But anyway, back Man. to the movie. So where were you in your life when you saw this movie for the first time? Uh, I was home, dude. I was playing video games a lot. So uh, I don't believe I went to the movie theater to see it. I don't remember that. Yeah. But I do absolutely remember watching it at home on a VHS. And yeah. it was fantastic. Man, during this time, Mortal Kombat was the biggest thing in the world. Like... It took over the world. Like, it was the most controversial video game. It, Mortal Kombat's the reason that the MPAA exists. Ah. This is the original game that caused that rating system to be created because of the fatalities and the blood. Fatality. You know, fatality. And it just it just was so different. It was made by American uh, developers with, during a time when there wasn't really such a thing. Right, you had Atari, which was dying. You had Nintendo, which was thriving, and then out of nowhere, you get this American fighting game where there was no such thing. It was Street Fighter or bust back That's then. That's it. That's and this it. is like Street Fighter Two, mind you. Correct. So Mortal Kombat came and just took over the the planet, and, and it was violent for the nineties. Oh, it was the, that was the game your mom wouldn't buy you, right? Would not buy you. You got to go to your you friend's know, house absolutely. to play it. You, you know, you see the scorpion taking the spine out, and you're like, "Wow, that was that was kind of cool." But, you know, you know. Uh, you know, Johnny Cage doing his fatalities and stuff. And you have to put in the blood code so that you can get the blood code. The blood code. I was going to say because it wasn't it green. In it, the game? Yeah, originally that was the that was the Super Nintendo Super version. Super Nintendo version. Yeah. yeah, you have to put in a weird blood code, but the Genesis version, which everybody had, was just the one that actually had just the I think the natural blood in it. The natural blood. There you go. So. Man, so when this movie, when we found out that there was a Mortal Kombat movie coming out, we were just like, "What? Like, how? Like, like how is this, how are they going to do it? Like, how do they do it?" And I remember I was in Georgia visiting family, and I was a little kid. Mikey Short Pants. I'm not ready for this movie. I had no, no, didn't know what to expect. Didn't know I would like this kind of music. And the movie just starts with that Mortal Kombat! And you, everyone just starts screaming in the theaters. Like, kids are just losing their minds. Yeah. And it just doesn't stop with the coolness and the 90s coolness. And by the time the movie was over, it was raining in Georgia. So yeah, he had a bunch of me and my cousins running around doing kicks in the rain, <laughs> screaming Mortal Kombat and our parents were like, we don't know what to do with them. For the rest of the night, they're wrecked. Correct. We're just karate kicking each other and <laughs> get over here and pulling our shirts and doing all types of crazy stuff, man. Well, I would say that it had a heavy impact simply because I I quote Mortal Kombat quite a bit. I will yes. be walking down the street and I will just out of nowhere, your soul is mine. <laughs> and, you know, things of that nature. So, I, 
I didn't quite realize that I was doing it until I went back and I rewatched this film, and I I was like, you know what? I quote like three or four of these quotes all the time. Like, how many times have you been reaching for something and you're just like, get over here? You just grab it, you're oh, like this naturally, so iconic, right? You, you have to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 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 Yeah, like, <laughs> that's another that's thing. Classic. That's one thing I did want to mention about this movie is that it had something I never thought it was going to have, and that's a sense of humor. Everybody and it was it's such a low key, dry sense of humor that is not this almost is like an archetype for Marvel movies in a weird way. Okay. If you think about it. If you really think about it. It's faithful to the source material. It's not an original story, which it builds on a story. It modernizes the characters. And it has an undercurrent of comedy. Because you know every what? character has a slight sense of humor on some level. You are correct. It is definitely not Enter the Dragon. It's not Enter the Dragon. Which had no dry. comedy. It was a, <laughs> serious stuff was going down <laughs> in Enter the Dragon. <laughs> correct. You know, stakes were had. And not to say that the state of billions as... The state of billions are dependent upon your victory. Oh, that's not <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, from Liu Kang to Johnny Cage, of course, to Sonya Blade to Raiden. Even Sang Shung had some zingers. You know, he's like, like, are you that eager to die? You know what I mean? Like, he, he had some jokes in him. Kano, for that matter. Ah, oh, Kano. Come here, baby. I've Come here, waiting. baby. I've been waiting. Baby. I've studied all your moves. You know, so great, so, so great, so iconic. Yeah, absolutely. So when it started, um, I was kind of, you know, let's watch Mortal Kombat. I wasn't amped. And then as soon as I heard that famous intro that you're you talking can't about, help you, it. You can't help it. You and all of a sudden you're, you're off whisk, on a ride. You're back in it. Like it. you cannot feel like Mortal, watching Mortal Kombat until the intro. Two, three seconds into this movie, you're already just zoned in. Yeah. And you have that six. Okay, let's start talking about the movie. Because, Absolutely. And yes, we're going to get to spoilers. So if you've never seen Mortal Kombat, please watch this movie. Not Even if you're not a fighting game fan, just watch this movie. It's about time you go back and watch. It's about time you go back and watch you some Mortal Kombat. Because right. it is a classic. And honestly, outside of this and like Event Horizon are the only two movies I like from Dobby, from Paul W.S. Anderson. I didn't realize he did Event Horizon. Right? But, you know... He okay, was, I can see why people gave him money because yeah. he has an eye for 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 filmmaking. Like yeah. the guy has chops. Well, we'll get to the filmmaking. We'll get part. to the filmmaking. I'm not saying this is. <laughs> I'm not saying this is. Uh, you know, some kind of film classic. It is, are but you, it's not. It's not gone with the wind, though. Are you calling not calling it cinema? You're not. This is not a cinema theater. No, you have popcorn with this. It has gravitas. It has though, right. It has heavy gravitas, dude. Five, four, three, two, one. So as we get started with... Let's get started at the beginning of the movie. How does, how does this thing open, right? So we open with some random character fighting... Uh, we, we, what we know as a random character fighting Shang Tsung at some sick-ass temple. Mind you, this is before heavy CG, so every set... Is handmade. It's on location. Pretty beautiful. It's too. beautiful venues and it's and scenery in this film across the board, right? So we're in, I want to say Tibet or somewhere like that, like ancient China. It's undisclosed Earth realm location. You know what I mean? And you see Shang Tsung, who's played by uh, Carrie of, of I can't remember his last name, um, oh, but uh, the actor himself. It possibly steals this movie. Oh, Sang Shung steals this movie. We have a little surprise coming towards the end, and I just want to say that I could not beat Cash Shang Tsung. I had I thought, to. You have I to. Thought, and I thought, and I, I couldn't do it. No, like, you have this, to. This is the guy. So he still is the guy because it doesn't matter. Sang Shung is one of those roles where it's like Logan. Like the older you get, the more you look like the character. Correct. Like, He's fantastic. The older Hugh Jackman got, the more he looked like Wolverine. And right? from the opening, your soul is it's mine. mine. No! From the beginning, you're, you're just like, oh <laughs> you're my goodness, there. it's Mortal it's Kombat. It's so good. It's so such, good. It sets the precedent of being Mortal Kombat to, like five minutes into the Absolutely. movie. You're opening to the tournament, right? Absolutely. You see what we find out is Liu Kang's brother getting mauled 
by Sang Shung. He's just completely outclassed. And not to say that Carrie's uh Kung Fu was that great in this movie, but he's such a good actor. He just looks like pure evil. Pure evil. He's so... He does not look his like swa- a good guy. Shang Tsung swag is a thing. Yes, absolutely. It's such a thing. I love that word. That I should lo- be in the dictionary. Shang Tsung swag. Because <laughs> he just he has such a gravitas to him that every time he enters the scene, you know some cool shit's about to happen. Right? So we do the sick zoom out where it shows... It, we show Shang Tsung's face turn into like an evil rotted skeleton. And it just goes to show that the graphics in this movie are so hit and miss. They're super duper hit and miss that because is, of the time. That's our first look of, you know, the 90s. This is the, if you want a <laughs> 90s film, you want to see how far like CG has come, watch this movie. Correct. Because no, don't get me wrong, the, the graphics on the CG front and even on the, on the uh, creature effect front aren't great. Goro is not great. Oh, no. Mind oh, you. Oh, no. Goro, Goro is, is not, not great, great at all. But it's so charming. Correct. Because of the time. Like, it, when you saw this back in the day, your mind freezes and it's perfect. And you watch it now like, oh, that's so shoddy. But I, you still love it because it's Mortal Kombat. Right? And it still took a bunch of work. And it still took a bunch of work and was groundbreaking when it came out. Correct. So we find out that that whole scene is a nightmare. That Luke's having a... Liu Kang, we're introduced to Liu Kang. Robin Show is introduced uh, as Liu Kang. And the first thing they do is they modernize the character. You enter into his room and uh, you see modern stuff. Because they could have easily set this movie back in like the 50s or the the 40s or the 20s. Because it's timeless. The the game itself was timeless. Correct. Luke came with something out of it. He was pretty much Bruce Lee. Correct. There's There's nothing modern in Mortal Kombat 1. Everybody's dressed like peasants. Even Johnny Cage is just wearing like disco pants. Yeah, and there's there's no real time frame, I guess, unless you want to look at Johnny Cage being you the, know, modern the, the modern star. Like, like he could have been like star, it so could have been like you know. something like you ever seen the Quest with Jean Claude Van Damme? Oh, yes, not one of Jean Claude's best, but it's Mortal Kombat, correct? And you have your American fighter who is a star, right? Correct. He's pretty much Johnny Cage in that movie. So if you wanted, you could. This could have been a period piece if you really wanted to. But it being based in modern times is so cool because it puts a whole other wrinkle to the Luke Kang character. You know, he had. You can see he plays basketball. You know what I'm saying? He has a basketball on the floor of his apartment. He has a bike that he has hung up. So the idea of modern Luke Kang as a character design is amazing to me. Yes, it's like it's like when you think of Peter Parker dressed modernly. But not, you know, our Spider-Man with a backpack on and headphones. It's a cool design. There's some, some bows running around. Right. Peter Parker with bows on. And you're like, huh. Ah, that's not the Peter Parker I grew I, up with, but. Fine. I'll take it. Peter, you know, Spider-Man <laughs> with Tim's on. <laughs> Makes sense. It's, right. He's dead ass, but it's kind of cool. Right. So, you know what I mean? We opened to Liu Kang. And honestly, you couldn't have picked a better person to play Liu Kang. Robin Show just looks like the character. So he doesn't look like Bruce Lee. No. He looks like Liu Kang. He looks like Liu Kang. It, it, in my brain, that's what the character looks like forever. He looks like Robin Liu Show. Kang. Yes. The kid, and I've, he's not really been in a lot. No. Ever. No. You know, he's been in things here and there. Uh, Very but, few of these, these, these wonderful cast members have, you know, enjoyed a fruitful Hollywood career. Exactly. Long, long Jack. Longevity. Only one who's really made it out this movie is Carrie. Oh yeah, I mean Carrie made it. That's out. That's another uh, testament to the movie. There's no and Christopher Lambert, of course. Yes, absolutely. But he doesn't count. The Highlander. The Highlander, right? So, um, it, so we open to seeing Liu Kang, and the guy is pitch perfect. Uh, he's cut. Yeah, the guy is cut. He's pretty freaking cut. He's pitch perfect to the the design of the character, right? Uh, then we open to, and then the, the scene goes into the the introduction of Sonya of Sonya Blade, who's played by uh, I want to say Brigitte, uh, not Brid- it's not Bridget Nelson, because that's because she was in like Red Dawn. No, I... or, uh, she was in uh, she's she played She Hulk for a split second. 
the actresses. Yes. The actresses are going to be hard to remember. Yes. So um, let's just go with Sonya Blade. We're introduced so, to Sonya Blade. Sonya Blade. I was, and what did, what did you think of Sonya Blade? I love Sonya Blade. She is not the best actress. Like her character in this movie yeah. does not exactly represent what I'm going to call flawless acting. Yeah. But at the exact same time, she did a damn good job. And I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, because she was a tough ass, no nonsense. I'll take it. Like, you know, like heroin like she was no she was to be saved by no one until the very end of the movie unfortunately that, which is a big problem i have with this film but we introduced in like a blade type intro where they're infiltrating a club that kano is was last located and sonya blade has this blacked out special ops jacks gear. watch my back jacks watch my back <laughs> And then we get like a sneak preview of Jack's Mortal Kombat 2. I completely it's forgot so that cool. that been, we're going to like get some Mortal Kombat 2. We get a lot of Mortal Kombat 2 in this movie. Stoked. You know what I mean? And it's like um, Jax is played by nothing and no one. But no. That, but that's fine. You know what I mean? And it's like this hard rock kind of still dance hall kind of rock is playing. And it sounds the coolest. So Sonya Blade is blowing cats away with shotguns. So you have that weird kind of a Chow Young fat kind of like John Woo moments in the movie yes. for a split second. Because yes. if you wanted that and you didn't really want Kung Fu, at least you got a little bit of that. You know yes. what I mean? That is absolutely correct. And then we're introduced to, uh, to Kano. Kano. Who's pitch perfect. The, 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 why is the casting so good in this movie? You know what? Uh, Kano, for me, is probably the best character actor in this movie. <laughs> they nailed Kano spot on. And I, I was watching this uh, the other night. And I'm like, you know what? If you want to give me a Kano movie... Like a, a I'm prequel, super good. I'm super good. I, I, I'm in with it. With this dude. And, you know, because this is a guy I do not want to know. Yeah, Period. my mind you, his portrayal of Kano was so good that Future Games made him Australian. Kano <laughs> in the original Mortal Kombat was not Australian. What was the, he was just some you know Anglo Saxon dude with with cyber tech. Okay, he didn't so have he didn't have any voice tech. work. He didn't have any background as being like either New Zealander or or Australian. But this actor came in and killed it so hard that they they swerved the character design forever. So Kano is Australian forever, all the way up until Mortal Kombat X. You know what I mean? He's that good. You know, what I mean? you know he just still, he's another guy who, who almost steals the movie outside oh, of like Sang Shang. For sure. He is so for sure the beginning part of this movie is made by Kano and Sonya's Chase. Chase. Like like yeah. you you get a taste of Kano and you're like, "Man, he's kind of cool." And just to be fair, when you look at Kano's like I, I mean, the graphics are so good on that. I would have taken Cyborg and Justice League with that type of... Like, Why not? Like, it's so simple. It's so effective. Absolutely. It's just a prosthetic that glows, that looks cool. Right. And everybody who knows Mortal Kombat geeked the hell out because yeah. it's just Kano. It, it was very true to the character. Very true to the character. And that character was hard as hell to use. I want to say Kano is oh, not an no one, easy Nobody use, picks man. Kano, man. No one picks Kano, but you should. <laughs> you should because he has eye lasers and cannonball. Come here, baby. <laughs> it, you know, and he's talking to Sang Shung and they're working out some black deal because Sang for for some reason Sang Shung is on Sonya Blade tough in this movie. It's never explained why, no. but apparently Sang Shung has been keeping tabs on Sonya Blade forever. Well, he wants her soul, obviously. He wants more than her soul. That's what my he does. precious Sonya. Well, it's so weird. He's creeping on her ultra tough. Maybe, but it could just be a soul. She could just be a top warrior. I never actually got to that. Understood that, she's but such a pretty soul. But but we'll go on with that. So you know, uh, you know, Sonya is grilling cats in the, the in the actual club. Where's Kano? And everybody's like, who? You know, because it's, it's only her chasing him. Like, there's no team with them. You almost feel like Sonya Blade wasn't supposed to be going after him that hard, but she's like oh, disobeying direct orders and shit. Correct. Her her. And honestly, she should be court-martialed by the time she gets back from Seriously, Mortal Kombat. Because like, she just literally abandoned her... Her, 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 her entire her boat. Toes, she's, her, like, oh, she's no I'm, longer Special I'm Forces. Do, 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 I'm going to this boat. Jax is like, wait. Wait, you, you're an idiot, nope, Sonya. So... Now check it in. Re- uh, Bridget Wilson. Bridget Wilson. She was there also in... Sampras now. Yeah, so she was she also in... Uh, Sampras, yeah, Bridget Wilson. She was in... Uh, Billy Madison. Correct. That Veronica Vaughn. Okay, I won't finish that line because <laughs> yeah, okay. it's really, it's really bad. Excellent. But yes, Sonya Blade, 
Bridget Nielsen. Uh, Bridget Wilson. Wilson. See, that's all. I, that's all. I was easy to confuse. Also, there. last action hero, and I know what you did last. So. There you go. I like her as an actress. I, I didn't like that she didn't have really strong, like fighting prowess. Like her moves looked really, like she was struggling with the choreography. It looked like a little bit. Um. The choreography is is hit and miss, but yeah. as as I mean, it's the nineties. We weren't, but then that's no excuse because you have you have like you have like movies in the seventies we made by the Wu Ping brothers. But we and weren't into as perfection as we are. Currently. Nah, true. The standard true. was a tad bit looser, where it's like, oh, this is a film like you know we can extend our but, believability but bit. then again even johnny cage had at, at, was actually a proficient fighter in this movie yeah, on some was. level but sonia blade's character in the in the <laughs> game had very awkward moves she was yeah she would do like a leg grab like, and... like a left-handed fighter or yeah something. like it was just awkward to use her so but there you, you know, go they were getting true to the game. True to the game. I, okay, I can I can definitely agree with that. Which is what we're looking for when we, we want watch to watch these movies. Mortal Kombat. Because you know? uh, that's something I'll leave to the end, but it's authenticity to the game. It's unmatched. And honestly, probably my favorite video game movies of all time. The If not the best video game movie of all time. Outside of like Silent Hill. I'll have an answer for that by the time we get done with this. Perfect. But, you know, let's it's, complete it's up the, there. It's up there. Uh, let's complete the Trinity. Absolutely. And we get introduced to, to Johnny Cage. And apparent, and it gives you the the uh, the uh, lead in that he's in real big trouble. Johnny Cage is cornered. Yes. And there's all these guys with different. Each one of them have different nuts as weapons. So one has like size. One has a katana. One has an electric baton. And Johnny Cage is, has his shades on and it's a perfect Johnny Cage. He's like, let's dance. Yes. <laughs> and then the music goes do 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 do. Terrible do, music. Do, do, but yeah, do, go do. go on. This is some of the worst Johnny Cage music. You're I don't like, care. Oh, it's hype. It's hype well, as hell to me. Well, 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 that, that was a different beat from what we've been going uh, it's on fine. this far. But it's fine. It's super fine, mm-hmm. dude. Like, and Johnny Cage is beating the crap out of all these guys. Beats him. Yeah. Beats him hard and he doesn't get touched. And he he does once like one roundhouse kick. Video game accurate, mind you, roundhouse kick to the last guy and the guy doesn't drop. Yeah. And he does it again. And out of nowhere, he goes, cut, where do you fuck, Where do you get these guys? And it's all a set. And he's like, Johnny Cage is a movie star. Canon. And your brain just goes nuts again a little bit. Correct. And of course, he's being directed by uh, bootleg Steven Spielberg. Phony Steven Spielberg. Sp- um, I mean, you could have. Stefan Spielberg. Y- y- you could have paid a couple of bucks and got the real bird. There's no yeah. way Steve would have been in this movie <laughs> yeah, as I'm a cameo. Sure. I'm sure. Hey, well, no when we get to the reboot, that's that's destined to come out. Yes. Oh, why we haven't had this yet? Spielberg hey. will be there. Spielberg will be there. So we find out that uh, Johnny Cage's throughline in this movie is that no one believes that he really knows how to do the things he knows how to do. People don't, people think he's a cookie cutter action star, and not a true martial artist. Uh, his 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 former sensei master boyd shows up and with a tabloid that says johnny cage is fake as hell like like why does he why is he acting like he really knows this stuff he'll get his ass kicked in a real fight johnny cage is like i'm super tired of hearing that so mr boy um master boy gives him an option says join his tournament it's gonna be nuts you get all the fame and recognition people will find out you're the the true deal be on a boat tomorrow and johnny cage is like cool sounds good he runs off to johnny cage land and has his uh, a vitamin water or something and that's actually where we get into the actual plot of the film because yeah. up to this moment it's we all don't, character we development don't even know what we're watching we're yeah. just like all right these are some cool action scenes but what's actually going on yeah, so the they gave the stakes to johnny to carry um us into you know which is good because the with characters for someone who doesn't know what more combat is, you auto- automatically know each character's motivations. Correct. You know, Luke Cage is out for revenge, or Luke Cage is out for revenge, pretty much revenge. for his brother. Yes. Uh, Sonya is out to get her white whale, which Kano! is which is K- where is Kano? And Johnny Cage is out for recognition. Recognition because he's a fraud. Because he's a super fraud, uh-huh. and I don't know what city they were in, but that was the most jankiest like pier I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> if this is really made, in, if this really takes place in modern times, nineteen ninety two. Why does that shit look like it's out of, you know, like the seediest parts of Thailand? Well, it might have been. It, we don't know. They probably just had a f- 
need, needed filler. So they yeah. had to use a the cut from the actual Thailand part Jeez. of the, the set. There's no was. way I would be there. And of course, we get <laughs> we get Johnny Cage walking up with his 18 trillion bags because he's he's money bags movie star, and he tries to um, get Liu Kang to to pretty much like load his shit because he thinks Liu Kang is just a dock worker. And we get that little smidgen of personality in Liu Kang. You know what that dock actually looks like? It, was it uh, Daniel Craig, James Bond? Um, uh, which one? Like Quantum that, of Solace? Was it Quantum of Solace where yeah. he gets on the boat and mm-hmm. he's on that, on that pier? So. And goes, that pier actually looks a lot like that one. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. But yeah. Johnny's got his eight bags and he looks at Lou and... It looks it's like, hey, carry my bags. I give you money, you <laughs> you carry the bags, or is that Quite too complicated insulting. for you? Yeah. He was just like, no, it's okay. I got it. He takes the bags, looks over the side, and just throws them into the ocean. No fear. Looks at him. No fear. Looks at him, takes his money, and just walks off. Right. Great comedic timing. Correct. And Johnny does the appropriate thing, which is just kind of like, oh, man, I wasn't expecting Yeah, Johnny was just like, respect. Some, you know. Fine. <laughs> Great. Absolutely. You know. This goes back to the comedic undercurrent of this movie. That it just, It's the perfect sweet and sour. It's a perfect savory and sweet, this movie is. You know, it's not. it doesn't take itself seriously whatsoever. No. Which could have been a problem if it took itself way too seriously. And on the dock, we see everybody kind of meeting. So we've already met two of the, of the three Trinity. You see Sonya hiding in corners with Jax, looking for Kano with her super expensive Jurassic Park gla- uh, goggles. You know what I mean? And she's like, of course, where's Kano? Because <laughs> she says that like 18 times in the movie. Where is Kano? And she sees him bored. And Sonya just books it. Because she's, she's not thinking clearly about this man. Like, And apparently the backstory is, is that he killed her part, her original partner. Correct. And Jax is a new partner of yeah. hers. And she just, Sonya, wait! Sonya, wait! Hey, Sonya! And we never <laughs> see that black guy again. Because in Annihilation, he's another actor. Another actor? Really? Yeah, it's not the same guy. Huh. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we finally get on the boat, and it's just rickety. As, it's like a God of War boat. It's it, rickety as shit. It's a crazy looking. Boat. It's a crazy evil like fake boat. And of course, the boat is CG. That comes on, on a real dock, but it has fog around it, so it, it fakes. It tries to hide the effects a little bit. Yeah. But it's the shittiest boat you ever seen in your life. I do not want to say graphically the ocean in this boat. And no, it doesn't even look like it has seats. Absolutely not. It doesn't even look like it has toilets. Right. This thing looks bootleg as shit. <laughs> And uh, they've and she and you know Johnny Cage sees something and immediately tries to flirt with her, and she puts a gun in his throat and it's like, "Where's Kano?" He's like, "I have no idea who you're talking about. No. You can't just ask strangers who this man, is, where this man is, not just, with a gun not to people's just throats. throats." Like I get it. <laughs> and Johnny and uh, Liu Kang goes, "Another starstruck fan, huh?" Because Johnny Cage, like Liu Kang, already knows who is who Johnny Cage is. Yeah, he's which is modern, like, like you were saying. Yeah, you know the Star Trek, Star Trek fan. How huh? he hits him on the shoulder, another yuck for the for the crowd to have. But this like, nothing else showed Luke King's personality as much as this movie did. Even the video games kept oh. Luke King as like a milk toast. Yes, absolutely. It's my Glad. destiny kind of character. But Glad. I love this Luke King because he has urgency. He has a personality, and he's not just he's not he's not a Mary Sue, as it were. And Mary Sue, for those who don't know, is milk toast characters that really have no personality. Some would call Cyclops a Mary Sue, oh, Goku's a Mary Sue. Yeah. You know, yeah. so these those are types. That's where the terminology comes. I would from. absolutely agree about that about Cyclops. Well, but... we're not going to talk about okay. Scott Summers, leader of the X Men. We will not right now. <laughs> so it's we we're we're going through the ship with the trio combined now, yes. and they're following Sonya because she's looking for Kano all over this damn boat. And we come across the the uh, the blood po- the the acid pool that's from Mortal Kombat two. That little bridge they're on is a homage to the acid pit in Mortal Kombat two um, reptile stage. Huh? I didn't quite catch that. Nice and there's catch. hooks all over the place. How about that? Learning things twenty yeah. years later. Man, because this game <laughs> has so many little Easter eggs to two. Because two was just about to come out when this came out. Absolutely. And, and I was an Annihilation fan, but whatever. Okay. It, exactly. Uh, I'm more of a uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat three guy, but that's the one I really stuck with. And then we get one of the coolest intros in film history. So they're walking across the bridge, and uh Shang Tsung comes to greet them and he's really cool he's actually kind of nice he's like hey welcome to my boat 
We're going to go to the sick ass tournament. I hope you guys have fun. Right. Where's Kano? He's like, I can't help you with that. You know, maybe you should uh, kind of relax my sweet song. He's like, how do you know my name? And then the door opens. And part my French, but fucking Sub Zero and Scorpion walk out like bosses, dude. You're like, there's so gonna be I'm, trouble. My favorite Mortal Kombat character personally is Sub Zero. Well, yeah, I'm a Sub Zero guy. Sub Zero, because it's like Ryu or Ken, you know, Mario or Luigi, Scorpion or Sub Zero. They're absolutely connected. You, you know, know, in the fates of lore, forever. You can't have one without, without the, the other. other. You right. Got, you could not make a Sub-Zero movie without out Scorpion and vice versa. Absolutely. So they walk out together and Scorpion and Sub-Zero, the deadliest of enemies, but slave is under my power. And they pose and they have their quick little power intro and Sonya pulls a gun on Shang Tsung. Step aside. It's, it's almost something like Resident Evil. And Sub-Zero freezes the butt of the gun or the uh the 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 actual uh, shaft of the gun it just cracks it and it's the coolest small explanation of ability oh man he wears strong. blue he controls yeah. ice right right so then we see scorpion who has the all white eyes and it's like it's legit scorpion and it's like there's no one there man like there's he's no gone there's no talking on. to this no. dude no <laughs> and let's get to the character design because the costumes are right out of the damn game. Dead on. Right out of the... And that was always one of my biggest gripes growing up, was that the costumes are never like in the comics. No, they got to... In the 90s, they were really bad at that. Absolutely right. Like Steel and the Phantom and, you know, it just never got the costumes right. Scorpion and Sub-Zero were dead fucking on. And even their little accents, like Scorpion's mask, had the crazy like bio-engineering kind of skull shit going on. It looks so cool. And then, but the biggest sin of Scorpion was his weird animatronic CG snake spear. Yeah. Which I had problems with because I thought it looked cool. But then I was like, it's not. That's not how that works. Yeah. They just fly and shit wherever it wants to go. <laughs> so you're like, is he going to do the get over here? And right before they start fighting, you see Raiden appear and strike down and go, enough! You know, in that weird uh, Christopher Lambert voice, man. That guy. Odd casting. Just, I, I that's mean, the worst casting in the film. I, in I mean, opinion. how in the world did this happen? But. But I get it, it. You know what? I, I get it. You it, know? It, it, it works with the rest of the movie. It you grow to love works. it. Yes. Because he has his own personality it grows that up. maybe another sure. actor couldn't have brought. Because cool. anybody would have hammed it up and made it Shakespearean. I'm a god of thunder. But he's really relatable. Even when he meets Liu Kang at the beginning of the movie yes. and he tests his mettle. He's just like, hey, you know, you're a punk and you ran away from your, uh, your, your duties and your little brother got super killed. And his soul is in torment forever. It was in Sang Shung. That's kind of your fault. Right. Giving him shit. And it's like the main character of your film. But uh, Raiden kind of goes and saves their butts because they weren't going to win that fight. Not at the stage there were. Uh, They had no idea what was going on. What was going on. So, you know, some dude just froze a gun. and and, One guy has a monster living in his hand. Yeah. So, you know, in the scale of, oh, I'm in deep shit, we're like at an 11. Yeah, we're in in (laughs) super 11, right? Correct. So we finally get the exposition of the film where uh, everyone on the boat goes to bed, but our main characters, Raiden, Liu Kang, Johnny Cage. They don't Cage sleep the stuff. entire movie. Yeah, those guys, I don't see a bed no. other than the one Liu Kang wakes up out of. No. He had a long-ass weekend. No. How about that? Yeah. So, of course, Raiden explains, you're in Mortal Kombat. This tournament has been going on for thousands of years. Uh, we're going against a alternate reality called the Nether Realm, or Outworld, as it were. And if the Outworld tournament people beat us 10 times in a row, they could just have our dimension, which is Earth Realm. Right. And they've won nine times. So it's really up to you to win. And if you fail, the fate of the entire world is at your shoulders. Now, at this time, I'm looking at the screen going, you know what? From what I've seen of Lou, Johnny, and Sonya, I'm not sure. I'm not for, really I'm sure not they're up, sure for this up for this fight. This task, man. <laughs> you see what's going on, <laughs> right? These bastards like, have powers and shit. Eh, you know what? These guys, you eh. know, mm. <laughs> Ryu, Ken, and you know, Guile, Raiden's, they're not. Raiden's amped. He's like, you guys got this, so, right? It's fairly impressive. 
And they're all like, okay, we see you have powers. Why don't you just fix the problem yourself? He's like, I'm a god. I don't interfere with mortal mortal trivances. I can't. But I can train and influence you to make the right decisions. Right. And he's like, all you guys are going to fail as you are now if you don't grow as, as a person. And you, you don't get over your fears. And, of course, they're all tough guys. I'm not afraid of anything. And, and Raiden runs them down. Johnny, you're afraid of being fake, so you're going to run into fights uh, bullheaded like an idiot. And you will be beat. And you will be beaten. You know? Sonya's, af- uh, Sonya's afraid of accepting help. So, yeah, you know, just so she, she's, you she know, wants backup. She'll radio for it. I'll radio for it. Right. Uh, Sonya Blade. There's so many good lines in this damn movie. And of course, Luke King is, is afraid of facing his own destiny, which is being the Shaolin monk badass who should have beat Shao Kahn months ago when his brother got killed. Correct. You know what I mean? His brother, like, okay, I have to p- pick up the load for my deadbeat American bound brother. And he got his ass whooped. Of course he did. Right. Right. So. Uh, Raiden tells them to be prepared, which is one of the Mortal Kombat 2, which is the tagline for Mortal Kombat 2. Be prepared. And of course, Sang Sung does the iconic, it has begun. Yeah. And you look up, it's the face of Shao Kahn. And you, but you don't know it's Shao Kahn yet? That's yeah. another Mortal Kombat 2 nod to this movie. Absolutely. And then we get to the, you know, Pleasure Island, which is. Sang Shung's Island and God Knows Anywhere. Are we going to call it Pleasure Island? People have fun there. I mean... Eh. It's beautiful island. I'm not, I'm not is, sure where this is shot. It is beautiful, but I'm not sure about pleasure. People have fun until they die. Maybe like Death Island. Or, yeah, man. You know, yeah, I'm just you waiting might for, die island. I'm waiting for the plane boss, the plane guy to run out. Uh, the plane, the plane. You know he's from there, Outworld. There is no plane coming to this place. No plane whatsoever, so... Man, we get to the island, and we get to the, uh, and we see for a glimpse, Katana, Princess Katana, another character that was not introduced until Mortal Kombat 2. Yes, 2. She was one of my favorites. She was one of my favorites in 2. Absolutely. You ask me Melina or Katana, I go Katana every single time. Every time. I was just main. The fans and the the move where you, like, get them stuck in the air, and then you do the kick, and then you do the instant blades. It goes Chuggly Katana. Thank Seriously. you. Thank you. Like Chun Li Katana. That's, that's the Chun Li is honestly the first lady of, of video and games. And then the chick in my from opinion, Taki from, from, from Soul, Soul Calibur. Yeah. Wind! Because I love me some Taki. But, you know, Wind! Chun Li kick all Chun-Li. the races. I hold Chun Li. Chun Li is my favorite female video game character of all time. Oh, see? There you go. Beating out Samus Orion. A lot of people get mad at me because of that. But honestly, Chun Li's been in better games and more games. But that's just my opinion. And I'll leave it at that. That's a that's a conversation for that another. is a separate separate conversation. Yeah, that's a conversation for a, for another <laughs> review episode. So we get to the island and we get to this huge banquet hall where they're eating roasted pheasant or whatever they got going hey, it's on. Grub, you having some saying? dinner. Eat twenty four. It's super. Eat twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> they they order. I didn't know Grubhub comes out to Outworld. Absolutely, they okay. deliver. It's good. We got yeah, from man. like six or seven different places. Yeah, man. It, it, we, spread. We, yeah, man. You see, that's PM Chang's over there. Absolutely. You notice it. And Johnny Cage went into one of his homeboys that he just knows. It's like another martial artist. Yep. Uh, Art Lee. Art Lee. Yes, Art yes, Lee. yes. He's like, "Hey, Johnny, what you doing here? I got an invitation too." Like, that's weird. Like, Have fun. And then playtime's over, and all the no name ninjas run and just fucking wreck the entire place. Uh, Wake up. It's like, it's like boot camp. Yes. You know? And then we get to the iconic a taste for things to come, you know, scene where this guy where I guess the main jobber comes out and this dude is ridiculously cut. He's like Bruce Lee cut. Yeah, he does some he, fantastic forms, some kicks, but yeah, he know. does a full kata. Then a full kata, and yeah. then uh, he he goes up against Sub Zero, which so. is a big problem because Sub Zero walks out as you know the ambassador, right? It's kind of like wearing the yellow vest in Star Trek. Yeah, yeah that guy was shirt. a red shirt. That yeah, guy was red super shirt. a red shirt. Yeah. So this guy's doing all types of cool katas and flip kicks and all. And Sub Zero just sitting there channeling his chi, and the guy runs out and does a flying dragon kick at. At uh, Sub Zero, Sub Zero throws an ice ball at him. Dude, flash freezes yeah. and explodes yeah. on the counter with his head, with his scared face, just frozen in time forever. Fantastic scene. Super. As a Sub Zero fan, I lost my shit. It's flawless victory. It was a fight. Flawless victory. It was yeah. legit. We were all excited. 
I was so it, <laughs> it was a, it was a fighting game. It was it was just a fighting game yeah. stage right that just happened. This guy was a character in the game. And he got one shot it by Sub Zero. Sub Zero, oh. dude, like you grow up wonder, hoping for this stuff to happen. It, you got to know if you're the jobber that that's about to happen. You've been around the block, you've heard the story, so you know you did your kata, you had a good day, but ultimately you froze you, and you fought you're fucking dead. Sub Zero, dude. What did yeah. you think was gonna happen? Right, you had no chance. You had no. <laughs> guy had negative a billion no chance. chance. So. Uh, Sonya gets a glimpse of Kano in the in the background somewhere, and so Liu Kang, uh, uh, in the group go going out through this temple looking for Kano. At at the same time, Kano is having lunch with Goro, and we get introduced to Prince Goro. Prince Goro, and it's rough. The Make it's up, rough. not great. I'm looking at it right now. Not, not, not fantastic. At the time, it was yeah. amazing. Well, not even then. Not even we then. Kind of like looked, you know, it looked like a Jim Henson Muppet. This is not what we kind of expected. But this is not what know, I was hoping effort. for. But he, the the puppet acts. You know what I mean? Because Kano was like, you know, if he's so great, why does he have such a crummy looking boat? You know, I'm just real confused about everything that's going on. And uh, Kano and uh, Goro's like, that was his intention to freak you out, you know? Yes. <laughs> the wise cultivate his favor. That's the point of, you know. This whole, th- it's all for show at this point, right? Because I'm sure Lu- um, Shang Tsung has infinite money at this point, right? But he has to put up the, the ambiance of terror to get these people in the right frame of mind that you're all going to die. Kevin Michael Richardson is the voice of uh, Goro. That was his intention. Yeah, man. He's also been in Transformers as well. He's act, uh, voice actors, man. Let's get these voice dudes in effect. So, Sang Sheng shows up and explains to Goro, like, if, why would you also would you think I would hire this idiot? It's just to lure Sonya. I don't care about Kano. I super don't. No. You're, you're literally lower than the crap under my heel. And the thing I'm about like Kano, a thousand years old. Is Kano's not stupid. Kano yeah. was immediately like, oh, this is taking a bad turn and I'm a tad bit frightened. Yeah, I'm legit scared. <laughs> what is happening? Right. You know, he's like, you should be scared yeah. because you're in, you're in the shit now. So we get to the first legit fight of the tournament. Legit fight because I don't count that expedition. No. Uh, um, you know, we get, we get Liu Kang in the deserts or on the beach Finding Hakeem the Machine. Do I remember a uh, UFC Masters? No. I know, no, no. What was it called? It was a show they used to show on Fox, and it was like a bootleg kung fu. Uh, like it was like American Gladiators, but for kung fu. Oh, I got nothing. Man. And the black and the black guy with the dreads who made the yeah. tiger noises. Yeah. It was actually Hakeem the Machine oh, from that show. Did not know. Yeah, let us know in uh in the ch- in the uh, comments. I can't remember the name of that show, but Liu Kang has kind of a fight with this guy. Who obviously has no chance. He's also a higher level jobber. Right. So Luke Hang gets to show off his skills. And it's a perfect Mortal Kombat scene. It's just an homage to one of the levels of the game where Shang Tsung is sitting there watching the fight go on. Right. And that's a Mortal Kombat staple. Shao Kahn does it later. So Luke Hang wins. You know, this is Katana just eye, you know, eyeballing them in the back. You know what I mean? And um And yeah, and from that point we kind of go on to the next part of the of the film which i can't really remember what happens n- exactly next after that scene <laughs> well then cuz we get the explanation cuz i think i'm skipping a big giant a, a big giant part because there's a big fight scene inside the actual temple with Liu Kang Katana and i mean i'm sorry Liu Kang subs oh, dang all these characters mixed up in my brain yeah we move Luke Kang, right Johnny over Kate. to the uh next fight which is going to be when Kano or Kano, when Katana and Liu Kang actually get a chance to to spar a little battle, and it kind of it's, oh. it's just a sparring session, right? And um, you can see, <laughs> and you can see actually, uh, Katana is kind of really not trying to fight Liu Kang, and she's giving him like little tips. You must use the element which brings life, which is cheating, mind you. That's a big thing. We'll get to that fight, but Liu Kang cheats to win. 
honestly. Well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Hey, man. All I, hell's breaking. Me. I'm super not mad at him. But the next fight after that fight is the Sonya Blade Kano fight. Correct. On, on, a, on the same day. I have a present for you. <laughs> and Kano comes walking out. Kano comes walking out. And um, Sonya Blade's very excited. She's extremely her, excited. Her terrible, terrible warm-up punches, which if you've been in a martial arts class at all, these are some weak punches Sonya Blade That's what I'm saying. Doing. Like so, Her as uh, a character has horrible fighting prowess. She man. is not going, you know, over, overall. But the fight itself, not bad. Kano comes out, explains that he killed the partner, slid him ear to ear with yeah. the knife. To ear. Ear to ear. <laughs> With the knife in his back pocket. And yeah, then man. And proceed to have a, I mean, a subpar fight. A super, its... probably the worst fight in the movie. By far, worst no, fight No, no, I, I take that back. The Johnny Cage Goral fight was kind of the worst fight in the movie. Uh, no, I take know. that back because he does the splits ball yeah, punch. absolutely. Which is iconic and awesome. Which is way better than the leg the fake leg because it was such so limp like that was not a leg toss like sonya does no i mean i don't know why they couldn't accomplish just that wwe wrestlers were doing it in the 80s 80s. and 70s so why would we have give me a break right give me a break and she breaks his neck and then we move over to To the the best fight of the movie absolutely johnny cage versus Versus Scorpion scorpion in the woods in the thicket of the woods and it's the best fight of the damn movie because Scorpion does his full move set in this movie. He's the only character that does his full move set because for a split second in the expedi- in the expo- expedition between Sub Zero and the Jobber, he does show like he does a little slide. Oh yeah, he does the slide technically because oh, yeah. he moves out the way of the body exploding. Oh, yeah. But Scorpion does everything. And well. That's what we're expecting. I mean, so Sub-Zero good. and Scorpion it's were so used well in this movie. Good. They didn't say a word except, get over here. That's all you need. Come back here. Get down here. Get right? down here. So uh, they're fighting in the middle of, of this thicket. Um, Scorpion throws his, get over here. And he just flies. It goes wherever it wants. It has a mind of its own. Yes. And Johnny Cage is outrunning it, right? <laughs> He's hiding behind trees. The thing finds him and picks up this, the, the pursuit again. Johnny Cage finds Scorpion again because he's still under the under the get over here spear, and he runs up at top speed and he actually does his move. Yeah, he does the shadow kick. Shadow kick, and it's so cool because it's only for a split second. And Scorpion does his teleport. Teleports, and he teleports him to the Nether Realm. Well, teleports him to like what maybe it, another part it, of the island. House, I was thinking. I thought maybe. I thought it was like teleporting him into hell because there there's skulls everywhere. I just there's these all these weird Scorpion platforms. Comes home and he's like, "Hey, honey, I'm home. Hey, it's honey, I'm long, home. Long day at work. I've burned off some people's faces today. Get over here. He gives her a kiss. Yeah, here, here's here's some stuff. Here's some bones. So. This is the best choreography in the movie by far. Scorpion is beating the shit out of out of uh, Johnny Cage again. Johnny Cage doing work, even though his character like yeah. isn't necessarily what you would expect from you know this movie and Johnny Cage and Johnny and Cage fighting. and fighting. Get down here! Where he kick he kicks and, and they're they're bouncing from platform to platform. Scorpion is jumping around everywhere, and to finish it off, the kicker is that he does his fatality. Yes. He almost does his fatality, but Johnny Cage then does his fatality. He holds the shield to block off To block the... off his toasty. Absolutely. He was going to toasty him. But Johnny Cage blocks it, throws a Captain America like shield at Scorpion and slices his chest open. Lava just spills out. Scorpion has his skull head and he, he, he pretty much fatalities uh, Scorpion oh, because yeah. then Scorpion he leaves. blows up, man. He just explodes. Just blows up. So, and then he leaves his photograph like in Mortal Kombat too. Which is just the strangest thing. It's Another like, fatality. Oh, That's well, actually a fatality in Mortal Kombat. It's like oh, his friendship. Oh, he does his friendship. Ah, oh, I forgot about the friendship. Yeah, where he leaves an autograph. Love Johnny Cage. Oh, I was just got a flash from my annihilation. They had the animal ones in there. Yeah, they had oh, the animalities. Yes. Oh, we, let's ooh, not talk about ooh, Annihilation. Ooh. Anyway, back anyway, to Mortal Kombat. Back to Mortal Kombat. <laughs> we jumped ahead a little bit because actually this is the part where uh, Katana and Liu Kang have their tussle. Yes. And, and, uh, their little exhibition. Their little expo- um, ex- How do you say that? Exhibition. Exhibition. I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Exhibition. I talk for living, living ladies and gentlemen. It's all good. Um, and then we get to the fight of Liu Kang versus Sub-Zero, which is not a bad fight. 
No, it's I not mean, the best. It's like not the. It's not the second best fight of the movie. But the it's intro the third best fight of the movie. Is so cool when Sub Zero comes down those yes, stairs, man. You're yes. like, oh shit, it's on Sub Zero. And then they do the perfect okay. ready. You might as well just have ready fight. Right, fight him. Yes, because they're standing in their their perfect poses. It's the poster shot of the movie. Yes, Liu Kang, because Robin Show is no slouch, and the guys who actually did the choreography for. Uh, for Sub Zero and Scorpion were legit martial artists. Yes, you know what sure. I'm saying. So the choreography is on point. Uh, they're flipping off walls. They're doing split kicks. It's amazing. It is amazing. But to be honest, this is not the best a, fight well, in the movie. No, like a parkour does this in the afternoon. Now. Right. Like, the jumping is yeah. very campy in a way. Absolutely. But but you know it's still fast paced, and that's one of the things I did like about the movie is it's it's really paced very well. Right, this movie is amazingly paced. Absolutely, it doesn't let you up from Mortal Kombat. So after Liu Kang beats, he Sub-Zero, cheats. He cheated because the water bucket was left there for him to win. Um, I want to say Katana left it there. No, uh, Raiden. Raiden, Raiden, Raiden left, left it, it there. Raiden left and, it there. Uh, Sub Zero does his cheat move where he literally creates an ice sphere that just starts engulfing the whole room. Yes. You're going to freeze and die. So Katana is there to kind of give him a mental. Hey, remember what I said earlier? The element that breathes life. Little wink. Water. So he throws an ice. I want to say like an ice, ice bucket. Ice bucket that turns into like an ice sickle sickle shard and super impels Sub Zero. Yeah, it's all over. Which is funny because that's later found out that that's Bihan who turns into Nopsabot. Which is original okay. original Sub Zero is Nob Sabat in the later games, and the Sub Zero we have now is the younger brother of this okay. Sub Zero. I remember, okay, because that because um, Mortal Kombat Two Sub Zero has the scar over his eye, and that's right. the brother of the original Sub Zero that got killed by Liu Kang. He has the cool leather outfit. Yes, is, yeah. with no mask. Absolutely, no to- mask. Redes- one of my favorite redesigns in video games because it's so different. And he has his ice clones and stuff. Anyway. You still use Sub-Zero throughout the course of the game. I've used Sub-Zero every single game. Because what am I not going to use Sub-Zero? He's the best. Right. But then we move on to the part where uh, um, Sang Shung comes to Goro and says, okay, we've let these humans win enough. It's time to clean house. And Goro, I want to say in this death montage... Probably kills about 75 of the combatant jobbers that are just there. Well, he, he kills a bunch of people that we haven't seen before. And, and we'll like, never hey, see where, again. Where, where's all these dudes coming from? They're They've just been fodder. Out. All right, that, that's cool. They start playing like Guar or something. Yeah. And like, if a girl's going to town. Bodies on, just get thrown, spewed over. Yeah, and the final one is going back to the beginning of the movie. Uh, we see Johnny Cage's boy, Art, Art Lee. Or what was Art, Art Lean. Art Lean is uh, there. And he's not doing half bad. No. Until Goro wants to start fighting for real. No, he's he's fighting Goro with all the moves. Art Lean was a famous martial artist. So, you know, he's doing his job. But Goro has four arms and is like it's, seven and a half feet tall. And he's like a 12,000-year-old Japanese myth dragon. And he's a prince. And he's a prince. And he's won nine of the last Mortal Kombat tournaments by himself. Yeah. So, so you know, no, you're going to die. Yeah, you're up against... Against a challenge. Yeah, so the guy eventually starts seeing, like, I'm not going to beat this fucking thing. Goro holds him up and just beats him to death. Yeah. Um, Better fit of forearms. Then... <laughs> 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 then Sang Shung does another fatality where he literally steals his soul. Steal your, your soul, soul is mine. mine. Yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> Johnny... Oh, you yeah. see his soul, like, swerve into Absolutely. his eye and he blinks and it's gone. It's the best visual representation Probably in the movie, like how he actually does that yes. that process, and of course the heroes of Earth are shook as hell. Oh yeah, and they, they go just to Raiden. The soul get taken. It's like, what are we supposed to do to beat this? And and like Raiden's like, these guys are not immortal. No. They can be beaten. You guys just need to get it together. Yeah, we, he has this coming to Jesus talk. Yeah, with the people because they're legit scared. Right, like, we're not going to win. How do we fight this? The training montage part. Of the movie begins. Yes, where they're all kind of coming to their own terms. Liu Kang has like a heart to heart with himself, has the vision. It, it, it does meditation. I mean, yeah. You know, that, we went stereotypical he here. We're like, oh, I'm gonna meditate. And it's I'm gonna, gonna meditate and think about it. I haven't slept, but I'm going to No meditate one sleeps. And it'll be fine. The next day happens and they're in their same clothes. Johnny <laughs> Cage brought 12, yes. t- 
t- uh, <laughs> uh, suitcases, but he wears the same stuff. Yeah. He lost all his luggage. All the luggage. No sleep, no showers. And then you have uh, they gotta Johnny be. and Sonya on the beach, you know, chatting it out. Chatting it out, having their one, I can't let him do this to you, not to you. He's like, you're so full of shit. You don't know Johnny, me. My goodness. Johnny Cage is so full of shit in this movie. I love this actor. He kills it. Everyone kills it in this movie. And Johnny decides that he wants to fight Goro. It's so stupid. So he's like, I'm going to fight Goro preemptively because I think I can beat him. So he goes to Shang Tsung and says, okay, I want to fight Goro. And this is where Shang Tsung is like, you really just, are you that eager to die, man? Nobody challenges Goro. You just happen to have to fight him. It's like, no, I want to fight him. He's like, but Shang Tsung is like, okay, I'll set it up for you. But I get to choose who I want to fight where I want to fight them. And Johnny, and Johnny Cage is like, deal. And right in the nick of time, Raiden shows up and it's just too late. The deal is struck. Yes. And Johnny Cage is Gentleman's like, word. Gentleman's word. We have a deal, as Sing Shung would say. And Johnny Cage is like, we're the mortals, man. We have to set the stakes for ourselves. We fight it. And then Raiden's actually kind of like, Hyped about it. He's it's like, about time. it's about time someone's listening. Like, seriously. Like, right. seriously. Like, someone's starting to get it. Right? And it's Johnny Cage, which is the unsung hero of Mortal Kombat, if you ask me. You, he, he does a lot of work when you break down the script. Even canonically, like, you know? Johnny Cage is a big deal. Right. In the Mortal Kombat universe. In the universe itself. But you as know? a character, he, can, he seems kind of soft and, you know. He's very underestimated. But what's a funny fact is... Uh, John Claude Van Damme was supposed to do the actual sprite work for the original oh. Johnny Johnny Cage, but he backed out to do Predator or something like that. I oh. think something like that. And so they said, "We're just going to steal your look and steal your whole entire." So Johnny Cage is an anagram to John Claude Van Damme, oh, or is well. an or is a analogy to him, or I'm trying to use the best word. I, th- I think I think. Uh... Yeah, an analogy is close enough. Cool. So the people we, understand. You guys understand where I'm coming from, Nerdiverse. I appreciate your your understanding. Uh, so we get to the part of the movie where it's Johnny Cage versus Goro, straight out of the game, and uh, Goro is like hyping up the crowd. He's a pretty much a giant hype man. Yeah. In man. his weird, funky animatronic self, seven feet tall, four or four arms. I'll you know, hype what I want when I want. Uh, when I want. Get hype. He's hitting the taunt button over and over and over and over and over again. So Johnny Cage walks in with his shades. And girl uses one left hand to grab his arm and the other left hand to grab the shades. He just cracks them in his hands. And he's like, okay, let's dance. Let's dance. And he does the iconic split move and punches girl right in his balls. Which none of us were expecting. No one was it's expecting fantastic. that. Fantastic. It's the perfect dead drop. Like I said, comedy, right? Yes. Undercurrent of comedy, which predates all the Marvel stuff. And in my mind, I thought that that punch threw him off of a, 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 a cave or a thing, but yeah, that's coming up. Later. That's coming up. So, Goro, of course, is rocked. Just he's got punched super hard by an abnormally strong human. And, <laughs> and of course, Johnny goes, "Jeez, that hurt!" Like, yeah, like, like he punched Colossus in the dick or I something. Mean, if he has four arms. How many? Bones how many dicks does he have? Uh, <laughs> Goro know, has seventy-eight quite, penises. Quite, quite possible. Yes, twelve sets of balls in the It looks air. like it's set on back a while. Are they made of they're made of animantium or something? So the fight continues because Johnny Cage just runs away. Yes, and Cheng Sung tells him, follow him. Follow him, finish, finish it. it. Right? So uh Goro's still jarred, he walks up and Johnny Cage gets to drop on him and kicks him in the face a bunch of times. And Goro, one of my favorite parts of the movie, Goro falls off the cliff. And he's hanging off the cliff. And literally, death is below him. There's, like, lightning and clouds moving. It looks nuts. Yeah, not going to be a fun fall. And Johnny Cage, those are $500. Those are a pair of $500 glasses, you asshole. Yep. And he's like, this is the part where you fall down. This and he defeats Goro. And, and that should have been it. That was the end of Mortal Kombat, right? Yeah. But because of that damn bet, uh, uh, Shang Tsung had the loophole to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge her in Outworld. Sonya. Sonya. Yeah, you take Sonya. Yep. Outworld. He takes her to, to legit Outworld, which is a place I didn't think we were going to go to no, in this movie. No, did not see this coming like, at all. And okay. We just went heavy part two. Heavy two. Heavy two. Heavy part two. So um, Raiden's like, I can't follow you there, man. It's against the rules. You guys going to have to go to Outworld and save Sonya and finish this. And they're like, fine, bet. And he's like, but we don't, what would he, how are we supposed to know where we're going? If you look hard enough, you'll have a guide. So, uh, Liu Kang and Johnny Cage go to Outworld, and this looks like complete crap. Yep. And he's like, 
And Johnny Cage is like, I'm okay. I could deal with this. Yes. He's like having a mental breakdown. Because it looks like it's a hellscape. It is. It not might as well be the thing. inside of the lament configuration. It looks like some Hellraiser shit. Yes, it is not fun. And what we haven't mentioned is that on the periphery of this movie is the invisible reptile. Yes. Another Mortal Kombat 2 character. Fun character. The I love me know, some reptile. Another, another Sub Zero. Another part of the Rainbow Ninjas. Correct. The Three Ninjas? Is that that movie? It's Three Ninjas. Yeah, three Ninjas? It's, right. it's, it's Reptile, Sub Zero, and Scorpion. The two Three Ninjas grew up to be, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, <laughs> you guys don't want us to do a review of Three no, Ninjas. Actually, that could be fun. I'm going to do watch. Surf Ninjas. You Sur- oh, God. Wait, that, Leslie Nielsen? Yeah, of course I have. Yeah. I've Quan Sud. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. That's another, po- that's another episode. So, on the whole movie, uh, Reptile has been keeping tabs on them, like following them around the island. Actually, spit in Liu Kang's face at one point. Yes, and uh, on the orders of Sang Shang. So Liu Kang finally grabs this thing in Outworld and throws him into one of these giant death statues. And my, I screamed the loudest in the movie theater when the thing got trapped inside that statue, morphed into Reptile, and then in the video game voice it goes Reptile. And then he just drop kicks him through a building. I lost my mind as a kid. Yeah, that's pretty good. This stuff. is the second best fight of the movie, in my yes. opinion. It's the fast, choreography is quick. It's quick. And to be honest, Reptile's beating the living hell out of him. the crap yeah. out of him. He's kicking him across buildings. Yeah. He's going to go across the entire room. The kicks are lightning fast. Uh, Liu Kang is getting worked. And it takes Liu Kang getting actually upset and wanting to fight. For the first time in the whole movie, he literally goes nuts on on Reptile. Because he has to. Because Reptile is killing him. And then another Mortal Kombat 2 homage. The way he defeats Reptile is he goes right into the bicycle kick. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Hold down B. Terrible move. You let it go. You do bicycle kick. I mean. I loved that part. I lost my mind during this fight. How they did that, they could have went back and been It like, was fine. You know, we, it's fine, we, we dude. Can figure something out it looks it. bad now, but as a kid, you couldn't tell me nothing. He did a bicycle <laughs> kick. What? The game has only been out like a month. How'd they do it? Yeah, it's fair <laughs> enough. I can appreciate it. Oh, man. You can't tell me anything about that part. So, uh, Katana finally catches up with them and explains the peril of Outworld. Like, this is once a beautiful place, but Shao Kahn. You know, just wrecked everything. Wrecked it. Shao Kahn came with Sang Song and just destroyed our realm. And you're, this is what's going to happen to your realm next if you don't win the tournament. So they're walking to the biggest castle in the area. And this is actually where uh, uh, Sang Song is mustache twirling with a captured, stripped and redressed Sonya Blade, which I thought was kind of weird. Right. I, I mean, thought it was super weird. It's it's a nice it, outfit. And she becomes a damsel in distress. <laughs> yes. Which, which I is, hate. Which is weird. But the like, character doesn't ever acknowledge she's a damsel in distress. No. The character's like... Because no. she's like, I'm still a badass. This is stupid. I'm stuck for the moment, but I'm still going to beat your ass. But it's it's a very weird transition. It's, I don't like it. This no. is probably one of my worst... My, one of my non-happiest moments of this movie. So somehow Liu Kang, Katana, and Johnny Cage... Get costumes, infiltrate the building. Great pacing. The... We didn't see any of that. This is just, I guess we didn't need to. We it's didn't fine. Need to. Like, it's fine. Got, okay. End of movie coming. We're end of movie be... coming. Right. So they sneak to the very top of the Castlevania <laughs> at the ab- absolute perfect moment where Sang Shung's about to kill uh, so- Sonya. Yeah, she won't accept. The she fight. won't accept the fight. So she he's was... like, "Okay, the, the emperor is going to be thrilled." They never name drop no. Shang Shao Khan, but of course, Liu Kang. And uh, Johnny Cage and Katana say, oh, we're here to help take off their hoods. And at first, Shang Tsung tries to challenge Johnny Cage. I challenge you, Johnny Cage. He's like, no. And Liu <laughs> Kang says, I challenge you, descendant of Kung Lao. They drop name drop Kung Lao, another Mortal Kombat 2 character. Correct. With the and hat. With the hat. <laughs> so cool design. Yeah. Sh- uh, Kung Powerful, Lao. too. Remember when that Mortal hat Kombat used to t- jack me up. I remember when I was a kid, I was in church praying to the Lord. That my mom bought me a copy of Mortal Kombat 2 for the Super <laughs> Nintendo. The most sacrilegious thing on earth. <laughs> At that time. At that time. Hey, but can you, I, 
Baby Jesus, I was can I please all have the Mortal, baby Mortal Jesus. Kombat too? Please. <laughs> During the time we had to pray, yeah. I was praying for Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2. That's hilarious. And I was obsessed with the, the remember the trailers for Mortal Kombat 2 was there, were in live action? Oh, yeah. And everybody would just go around their houses screaming Mortal Kombat. It was Mortal such, Kombat. you guys don't understand how big this was in the 90s. I mean. Mortal Kombat was all, it was all, it, that was it. You go to the arcade, you see a Mortal Kombat you know, uh, arcade cabinet up. Time You're on go. it. It's time, time to, to go. go. Absolutely. I got a dollar. That's two rounds. And, Bro, let's go at it. And that's what happens in this movie, too. Yes. When they take off the hoods and the, the challenge comes. The theme Luke music Hayes, starts like, kicking in. Ding, 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 that ding, ding, famous ding, music ding, ding, comes ding, on. Ding, it. Ding, it is time to go. Liu Kang is wearing his iconic Mortal Kombat 1 gear. Uh, Sang Shung, not so much, but he's such a good-ass character. Yeah. That you don't care. No. And Mortal Kombat kicks in. And they're fighting. And, more, and it shows that Shang Tsung at his core is a sorcerer. He's not really a fighter. No, but he's got some moves. he got some moves. But Liu Kang gets the upper hand. And throughout the whole movie, there's three stages that Liu Kang must confront to win the day, which is conf- confront your enemy, confront yourself, and confront your destiny or something like that. Yes. So Shang Tsung... Hmm? I'm sorry. The enemy. The enemy. Being- Shang Tsung summons is thousand eight. dead warriors, which equated to like eight guys, eight guys, eight jobbers, <laughs> which Liu Kang dispatches of in a, in pretty much just a kata. Short, short, short order. fight, yeah. short order. He is done, right? So <laughs> you will die. So then Liu Kang has to confront himself. So he goes up to challenge Shang Tsung, finally meeting his destiny. I am Shang Tsung. This is what I have to do. So they go on to the top of this. Almost like altar of what it looks like. And the Mortal Kombat signal is dead center yeah, of right the floor. Below. And mind you, the Mortal Kombat emblem is one of the most iconic emblems There's in the world. Like it. yeah, you, it's up there with the Superman symbol. That's it. So in the Pepsi For sure. symbol. It's the most iconic. It's one of those things you wish you drew. Trademark. Trademark Mortal yes. Kombat. I wonder what that dude makes up. Oh my god, can you imagine? No. <laughs> How many people have had tattoos, <sighs> designs, like it's and you can do 101 things to it, it looks amazing. But Liu Kang goes, and Sang Shung, being the shapeshifter that he is, turns into Luke's brother. It's one of the funniest, stupid moments of the movie. He's like, Is that you, brother? You know it's not him. Right. A your brother's dead and B that's Sang Shung. You just saw him. You just saw him turn into your brother. Is that hey you? brother, remember that time when our parents died and you promised? That you would protect me forever. Liu Kang should just punch him in the face immediately. Yeah. Stop being a jerk. Yeah. You know? So, of course, he sees through all that nonsense. And um, beats the second test of of his medal. And then the last test is ex- accept your destiny or something like that. And the final battle begins. Where Liu Kang goes into the last dragon Bruce Leroy glow. Right. And he's just unstoppable. At unstoppable. This All of a sudden, you know, Shang, Shang Tsung can't get a punch through. And it gets to the point where Liu Kang's not trying anymore. And this is like, and I think Dragon Ball took a little bit from this because this is a very Dragon Ball moment where at the end of the Frieza saga, Goku beats Frieza so readily that Goku just powers down. He's just like, you're not even a challenge anymore. Like I, You're so utterly defeated. That I'm just gonna go away, and Liu Kang tells Shang Tsung, "It's over, dude. Like yeah. you're to- co- totally defeated." So uh, Shang Tsung, being the arrogant one thousand year old sorcerer badass, he says, "There's no possible way." So he rushes at him. We get the POV shots of Liu Kang beating the crap out of Shang Tsung, and in probably the worst effect in the entire movie because it's so cheap and so not cool. He actually does his signature fireball but it's like at two seconds close to him it reminded me of the street fighter movie what? where ryu does his hadoken is literally just a flash it's like baby chi <laughs> i hate that part it's like baby i hate it chi don't do up. it if you can't do it right you know what i mean i mean what are you gonna do i mean we can have scorpions uh spear flying around the the forest but we can't have a decent dragon fireball no apparently not bastards baby chi so he def- so mind you this whole time the pit is growing so the pit from the actual video game yes. with the spikes coming out in the shape of the mortal of the mortal combat emblem 
Liu Kang throws, uh, pretty much knocks up uh, Shang Tsung into the spikes, and he's that's, done. That's it. Finn. Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung's finished. Yeah. He turns into a zombie because he's all the souls are going out of his body, and literal soul NATO comes out of the damn ground and just starts enveloping the scene. I'd like to see soul NATO. We're going to throw souls at you. We're going to throw afraid. souls at Oh, they'll say that too loud. It'll be on the Sci Fi Network. Oh, Freaking. Well, maybe. Ugh. Budgeted like $300. With, with you guys Tiffany, have $300. A hot $300 will get you soul NATO, bro. Absolutely. With Tiffany Amber Thiessen and shit. She's kind of busy on Food Network. Bro. Oh, okay. Damn. Just to let you know. So, of course, Luke Kang's brother comes out the Soul NATO to be like, hey, bro, no hard feelings. It's good. It's good. I'll be seeing you soon. See you when I see you. Right. I am going to see you. We're, we're going to hang. We're going to hang out. But Get for now, King. I'm with you forever. Yep. We'll, I'll, we'll go to Burger King. My King soul's heaven. with you forever. My soul's with you forever. But it's going up here, so that's kind Stay of down here. since I was just in someone's like, yeah. you know, soul, soul capturing thing. I kind of have to go to whatever version of heaven yeah. exists in this world. So it's more figuratively. It's, it's figuratively. And that's the movie. Uh, Liu Kang wins. We get to that cool-ass ending song. Yeah. Darude Yay! Sandstorm. You know, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. They go back to the Shaolin Temple. There's flyers and everything Kids going. Kids everywhere. Kids playing. We're guitar. children. We're children. And everybody won. And uh, it starts to get cloudy. And, and uh, Raiden's like, oh, no. Who's that? The Emperor. The and Emperor. for the last stinger, sending you out on the hypest moment, one of the buildings explode, and it's a visual representation of Shao Kahn. And he says the line from the game, you weak, pathetic fools. Your soul is mine. And he's like, I don't think so. Awesome. Perfect awesome. setup to a sequel. Awesome shot. Mortal Kombat. Absolutely fantastic. Trailers and music, trailers and music, trailers and music, trailers and music. And uh, Raiden goes, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. They do the classic poses. Yeah. Mortal Kombat screams. Screen goes dark. And then we go to Annihilation. No. <laughs> Well, no, we don't talk about it. <laughs> you leave the theater on so hype because this movie never gives you a moment to breathe. No, it's a good p- pacing. It's hour thirty, hour hot, hour thirty minutes, nonstop action, nonstop laughs, nonstop story. It br- Mortal Kombat as a story is convoluted as shit. Oh yeah, it's so convoluted. But oh, this movie yeah. does such a good job explaining the stakes. And explaining what is really going on. And, there's there's and, heaven, there's hell, and there's earth. And they don't take themselves too seriously. At all. It. So it's made simple. It's not. It's such a like, fun. Well, where'd this strange boat come from? And what is Outworld? And like, what goes on there? Who is really Sub Zero? Do Bro, we care? You know, why does dimensions happen? Like, Who, do we care? A, no. What's, Zor- what's Goro's backstory? Do we but, care? No. How do not in work? this movie. Yeah, no. They're just cool creatures. The explanation is there from Outworld. And it's time. That's all you need to know. Then that's the end of the movie, man. Mortal Kombat 1995, Paul W.S. Anderson. In my opinion, the best video game adaptation film of all time. You know, I would give that to you, but I can't. Okay. I'm going to have to go to but that's just me. Oh, you mean the Laura Raider. Croft Tomb Raider? I'm, yeah, I'm going with like the Angelina you know Jolie what? Tomb Raider. I love that freaking franchise. Real quick, I'm going to give top five. And you see if you agree with me or not. Top five video game adaptations off the top of my head of all time goes as follows. Mortal Kombat. I will give it to Tomb, the first Tomb Raider with first Angelina Tomb. Jolie. That was a pretty faithful adaptation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Silent Hill. I was going to say Silent Hill. Music direction even though it veers off the storyline a little bit but the look and the, the look feel, and the feel is, is silent dead on, hill dead on mind you doom i was i was going to give you doom doom but man uh, the pov sequence alone makes that top five because mind you most video game adaptations are shit yeah i guess so we're not go- so with that. i mean like tomb raider and mortal kombat are leaps and bounds Oh, above yes. the rest. Yes, for sure. So, mind you, if I have to fill out a top five, it goes Mortal Kombat, Tomb Raider, uh, Silent Hill, Doom. And I want to say the last one has got to be probably Dead or Alive. You ever seen Dead or Alive, the fighting game? Oh, no. Yes. Uh, I, movie? No. Yeah, oh with, with Homegirl from My Name is Earl. They made a movie Tina. out of that? Yeah, it's pretty bad. The game... 
Really? Yeah. You have to you have to watch it. It's worth watching. Oh my god. Because for what it is, the characters are kind of accurate to the characters in the game. Uh, yes, and I'm gonna actually switch out your doom with Kristen Kirk Street Fighter. Chinese no, story that is horrible. Sorry. No, I Sorry. will not sit here and hear Sorry. this. Come on. Dude, really? Yeah. No. Why was Bison Irish? <laughs> why was... Why did the weird dude from Black Eyed Peas play Vega? Where there's a billion Spanish actors that could have done it. It was a good movie. No, it wasn't. I have a small crush on Christian Kirk. That's, but that Kirk, can't sway. That yeah. doesn't. It's yeah. gonna sway it. It's gonna sway it. That I own it. I own it. Blu-ray. And yeah, it's, it's. I'll take your Street Fighter, the animated, the street, not the animated movie, because that's godlike. But Street Fighter, uh, the Legend of Chun Li. Yeah. And I will swap that out for Resident Evil One. Oh. Another Paul W S Anderson hit. I mean, I hate the movie premise, but it's a good Resident Evil movie. I can't front it on that. I hate Alice. Well, all right. This is going to be a story. I super hate Alice, but but... Alice is terrible. It it, it just goes off the rails. Once we get to the, uh, the, the closing in, I hate the the red queen, the red queen. It just, I hate the compound. I hate all the new shit. It adds and everything that came after that movie is not. No, the best movie. uh, I don't mean to get on a tangent, but the best resident evil film is the second one. Because it's the closest damn thing to the video game. You get Jill Valentine. You get Nemesis. You get stars. And you get the city. You're in Raccoon City. You're not in some weird ass right. underground base that has nothing to do For sure. with the fucking game. But I guess that was the thing you that still get liquors. Evil cool is that it, the first one was, again, a contained... You know, but it had nothing movie, to do with the game. It was not. It was Resident Evil and Name Alone. Just the beginning, like with the red dress and her walking around. I hate Alice. I, did, didn't they just? I hate OC. You want to marry Sue? Resident Evil movie. You want a Mary Sue example? Alice is the biggest Mary Sue in movie history. She is. I'm perfect. I cannot be defeated, no matter what. You were supposed to love me. And you're supposed to connect with me. I'm the strongest and I'm not a feared of nothing character with no stakes and no urgency of all time. I'm going to put the last res- three Resident Evil movies up there. Right I just watched the final the, chapter. With, it's with, trash. I haven't watched it, but I'm going to put it right there there with the Transformers franchise. Garbage. Like franchises that just need to go this so off the away rails. and be like this. We will never do anything like this ever again. But because we've lost we've lost our way. We've lost but our moving, way. But moving, but moving back, on. And we can we can always cut that into a different, you know. That's a whole different like, list. Dude, Top 10 mo- video but game I adaptations. Would like to get to the casting of Mortal Kombat. Okay, let's do that. Let's just let's just fly through this. So what we're going to do here ladies and gentlemen is we're going to actually recast this movie for modern day with modern actors in a modern director. And I just want to say I kind of feel like um I I've been watching too many superhero movies, but you know, it is I can it is. you know what? I'm I'm right there with you. Or it's what Hollywood's feeding us because we get the same damn six actors but over and over. I again. think our so, lists are going to be very different, but very the same. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with the director. Who do you want directing this bad boy? Um, I want to start with the the company I want to to make this film. Fair enough. Film. Fair enough. I can match and you on that. I'm going because it's going to set the tone. I want Blumhouse to do this film. Horror. I want to see a remake. Blumhouse, Interesting. Mortal Kombat movie directed by. Guillermo del Toro. You know what? You know what? That is strong as shit. Because one, Guillermo will get the monsters right. Dude. For one, Guillermo loves action He's films. That shit crazy. It's going He's to brilliant like, as shit. He has sensibilities. Yes, it's going to come across mm, with Blumhouse. That's strong as shit. I freaking in on this. I want. And this what's to funny happen. is, is that it, I have a tie to Guillermo del Toro on my list, but okay. we'll get there. That's strong. I, okay, your your setup is different than mine. Okay, but God, I respect it. All right, excellent. Blumhouse, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. For me, I'm going in a more fun, not so much horror route, okay. action route. I want legendary films, uh, leg- legendary films to make it. The guys who made a Pacific Rim and um, Godzilla. And this is a movie studio that just does cool shit. They never makes. They don't make dramas. No. They don't make horror movies. They make just cool ass movies. No, 
And when we were thinking about directors, Godzilla director was on my list mm-hmm. of possible directors for this movie. But I have a very unconventional director for this. Yes. And I think he will be awesome. And that's Brad Bird. Brad Bird. I want from, Brad Bird from The Incredibles and from um, uh, Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol. Yes. To please don't count um, Tomorrowland because that was not his fault. You no, know, I've never saw Tomorrowland. Tor- Tomorrowland so was horrible. Things. No. It's not his fault. That was Disney holding his hand. But Brad Bird has such a timing, direct directorial timing, and he has such a good action timing. Okay. Well, and you, he knows how to write a story. You're going in a completely different route. This is what I, I love. And this mine. is, this so is why I love doing these. Because yeah, we're absolutely. making two di- totally different movies. Absolutely. Because your direction is going to be visually different than my direction. But I think Brad Bird would be a good complement to the action, the funness, the the the... the the, the fantasy of Mortal Kombat. You're keeping some of the sensibility of the first Mortal Kombat. You're going Kombat, more... Some of the humor. You're going on... Mortal Kombat's two sides of a coin. Mortal Kombat is gore, fatalities, monsters. But it's also kung fu mystery. Yes. And fantastical landscapes. Yes. So we're on two different sides of that coin. Yes. So this is going to get interesting. So let's go character for character. Yep. So let's start with Raiden. Raiden. Who's your choice for Raiden? Uh, I'm going Mark Hamill. Interesting. I want to see Mark Hamill, and this is where I thought about keeping the fun because mm-hmm. I wanted to keep Chris, Christopher Lambert. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, how? Because I hate it, but it still works with the movie mm-hmm. and it's light. And I'm like, who could bring that type of lightness? Interesting, but yet, but yet fun to it. And you know, Mark Hamill can do that. You're, see, we're on totally different wavelengths with yeah. this list because this was the hardest choice. In my list. Okay. Because you need a veteran actor, an older actor, and you need someone who can actually pull off the moves. Because I want to see Raiden fight in this one. Ah. That's my thing. In my remake, I want Raiden to get... I want Titty Bubbly. Not the Annihilation Raiden. No, not that guy. (laughs) So, I have two choices, which is a cop-out, but I can't choose between the two. My choice is Robin Shell, the original Liu Kang, to come back and play Raiden. I think that would be kind of cool and kind All of a right. send up to the original movie. Yeah. But my true pick is Stephen Chow from Kung Fu Hustle. Ah, look at you. He's whimsical. He can he can do the moves. And he doesn't have to speak English. No. You no, know, I would not. be super cool if everybody spoke spoke English, but Raiden spoke Chinese or Japanese or whatever. And you just subtitle him. Very cool. I would think that would be kind of a weird take on that character. Yeah. He's this ancient old, but he also is a child at heart where you get that. <laughs> Sorry. And keeping with your your light toner, you I want a lighter, lighter tone, tone for my yeah, Mortal Kombat, but also that, have the heaviness. Um, so next, who's your Liu Kang? My Liu Kang, the star of the movie, is Tony Ja. Interesting, from Ong interesting, Bak interesting. Because Tony Ja is the shit. He is the and fucking. If he's you the want man. A Liu Kang, someone who can who can pull off Liu Kang, I think that's Tony Ja. So and you feel that he can with. carry this movie uh, without a doubt. Else? With the martial arts wise, if you want to go horror, if you want to go someone who's stacked up to fight, like yeah, Tony Ja can bring. And bring his English has gotten a lot better. If you if you sat through Triple X, uh, the latest Triple X, Return of Xander Cage, yeah, no, he's in that movie. Oh, and he holds his own. He spe- he has his own speaking roles. He I, can probably do that. If you know? you've not gone back and seen on Bach, on Bach 2, some of Tony Shaw's earlier stuff, I mean, as far as a martial artist goes, he stands up with some of the best out of them. Good, good, so, good. How about you? My Liu Kang is another, is, is more of a no-name actor, but I've seen him in a couple of things and I really like them in it. And he has the acting chops and I think he has the look of Liu Kang. And that's Louis Tan. You may not recognize his name. Because he played Shatterstar in Deadpool 2. Oh. And he was also in the Netflix Iron Fist. Oh. He's, has, he's like an American Japanese actor. He has the look. He's, he started off as a, a stunt choreographer. So he has the moves. And uh, if you've seen Deadpool 2, he doesn't really get a lot of play because of how that movie turns out. No spoilers. But if you've watched Iron Fist, he does a move. He does, there's a scene between him and Iron Fist and he, he does drunken kung fu. And he's convincing as shit. He acts his ass off in that in that split second he's in it. And I think he can carry the movie, me personally, for my Mortal Kombat Liu Kang. One of the good things about uh, 
Iron Fist. He's probably the the best part about Iron Fist is because, that drunken kung fu match. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's talking the whole way through and explaining, man, like the only thing that can really quelch my dragon is alcohol because yeah. I, I feel so much pain through what I've been through. This is the only way I can stay sane. And, and, that, he's, and he gives Iron Fist to run for his money. He is pretty good in that match. You that know what I'm saying? So that match. guy is my Liu Kang. So who's your Shang Tsung? Uh, I, that is the one I, I have nothing. I'm keeping Shang Tsung, Shang Tsung. Um, okay. Uh, that's just the way it is. They, but, your soul is mine. That's it. It's hard to recast Carrie. It's really yeah. hard to, but Very you have hard. to. You wow. kind of have to. If, if I'm going to keep... Because with these casting lists, I try not to do doubles. Yes. And especially in the exact same role. Yes. Which was my cop-out for Robin coming back as Raiden. Correct. Because he's not coming back as Liu Kang. So I'm no. keeping I'm keeping my cop-out. That's fine. You, you got to have one. I'm, I hear you. That's fine. My Shang Tsung goes back to your Guillermo del Toro tie. And I think would make for the best final fight in the movie. And that's Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen. He's played villains before. For those who don't know who Donnie Yen is, he's Ip Man. Yeah. And he's also in Star Wars uh, Rebel um, uh, yeah. Rebel 1. Donnie Yen. He could pull that off. He could play the bad guy. He can have the all white eyes. He can play. You can de-age him. You can age him. Yeah, I like that. And of course, he's one of the most nimble martial artists in the industry right now. I mean, yeah. And he can have that comedic timing. For sure. That uh, Sing Shong had. He can have that swagger, and I can see him in the last fight going ballistic in yeah, that role. That's pretty good. I did not think of Donnie Yen. So I would love Donnie Yen. It was either Donnie Yen or Jet Li, and, I, and Jet Li's too wooden for yeah, me. Yeah, no, he's not gonna. Jet Li's not gonna pull that off. So Donnie Yen would do it. Yeah. He has the comedic timing. He has the acting chops. He has the range. He has the range for, for that to be that villainous in, in a comic book role. film. In a you comic know what book I mean? film, like right. right. All right, here's a tough one. Who's your Johnny Cage? My Johnny Cage. This was a tough one. This was one of my other tough this ones. This is a tough and, one. Uh, I went with Chris Evans simply because Chris Evans has that comedic timing that Johnny Cage, you know, brought. And he also has that wooden, like, you know, I'm just here carrying the movie. It, like he does in the Avengers a lot of the time where he's just, you know. Don't mind me. I'm just carrying the plot of this movie. Whatever. Hey. Mild mannered Chris Evans. Big surprise. My Johnny Cage is Chris Evans. Chris Evans. There because you. he just, A, he has the look. Yes. B, he has the comedic timing. C, he has the acting chops. D, he could pull off the action roles because that fight scene in, all his fight scenes in, in uh, um, Winter Soldier are amazing. Right. Even if it's him or not, it's still convincing. And I saw a lot of Chris Evans in Johnny Cage in this movie. Some of the same lines. He could just say word for word. And Chris, I heard Chris Evans. It took me a little while to get with Chris Evans. But with the the, the film that I'm building, like everything's just a tad bit bigger. Yeah. So I was okay with having a bulkier Johnny Cage. Me too. So. And you need that American star yeah. that's going to pull people in. And that's Chris Evans. Yeah. So... Tougher than that. Who's your Sonya Blade? Emily Blunt. Fuck it. Fuck it. Emily <laughs> Blunt, bro. That was, I, it, it, that's when I got oh. the idea for this. I'm like, you know what? I can see Emily Blunt and Sonya Blade kicking some body. Because honestly, it, uh, Emily Blunt was always my Black Widow. Yeah. Always. She still is my Black Widow, fing- fingers crossed. But she's so badass. And she's so no nonsense. No nonsense. And she so kicks your ass. And this was hard for me because I was having a hard time finding uh, an American actress who's both has a look, who's young enough, who's not too old, and who reminds me of the actress in this movie. Mm-hmm. And mine's is a more unconventional pick. And I don't think a lot of people are going to feel it, but it's, it's my pick. And that's Maggie Grace, if you know who that is. From, uh, from Taken, from yeah. Twilight s- series. She's a young blonde. No. She has She has a serious look on her face. She can act. She, she could probably pull off the choreography, at least to the I, level. Well, I was uh, about to say, because the level of choreography that Sonya Blade has in this movie. Is limited. Not, yeah, it's not deep. So that's not a problem. Yeah, no, it's not deep. So and she could be a good foil to Chris Evans. Okay. Yeah. I mean. She's not a big star. And honestly, most of the stars I would like are either too old 
are too are are too soft looking in the face. She absolutely could get a paycheck for that movie. But She'd I would choose like, your cho- your choice before my choice. I I I'm gonna take Emily Blood every single day. Good times. So who's your katana? My katana, Christian Kirk. Uh, Sorry. Mm. You have, so you have a thing for Kristen Kirk, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I do. But she absolutely looks like it. She can pull off the moves, which she has done yeah. in both uh, Beauty and the Beast and Smallville. Okay. She has the body shape. She has the black hair. Like, she okay. she can easily pull off Ugh. Princess Katana. And even though I don't believe she gets enough credit for her acting chops, because she does, you know, WB stuff. Yeah. Please stop doing WB stuff. Mm. She has acting chops. So... Uh yeah no. Remember in Smallville where she got possessed by that Chinese West yes. West witch spirit? So garbage. Uh, Smallville was ups and downs. WB WB. And there's there's kind of a, a whitewashing that happens in WB and not right. like character. And that's why like, on my story. list I tried really hard not to whitewash any of the characters. No, just to save myself the headache. Yes. But my katana is Kelly Who. Oh yeah, you can go with Kelly Who. She was Lady Deathstrike in X Men. Yeah. Uh, two. She has small roles here or there. She's mostly like a character actress, actor. Yeah, I don't... She has the look. She looks regal. She's just the perfect looking Asian-American princess. I have no issues with Kelly Who if she could do the, whatsoever. If she could do the moves. So, that's my Kelly... That's my choice. Kelly Who uh, Katana. <laughs> Who's your Kano? I wonder who. I wonder if we're on the same page with Arcano too. This is out of left field, but I'm gonna go Christian Bale. Interesting. Explain I'm, yourself. I, I'm sir. going with Christian Bale simply because Christian Bale has the depth for "Hey baby." Okay, you, I can see. Like he can I come see. across as like a dirty, dirty dude for like Christian Bale has range minute. out of his ass. And dude. and when you think back to Psycho and you think back to the mechanic, you like if you put a little prosthetic on this on this man. And then Batman. And then bulk him up. And you bulk, bulk up like Christian Bale Batman. Yeah. And you have him walk out on the beach and give him a short five, six, seven minute, you know, scene. Hey, baby. The, I've studied all your moves. I've studied. Uh, Christian Bale yeah. is going to be my one for that. Okay, I think I got your beat. Okay. I think I got your beat on this one. Because my Kano is Andy Serkis. Oh. Andy Serkis is not my Kano. Kano is my something else, though. Uh, see, we're on the same teaser. Wavelength. Yeah, we are on the same wavelength. You know what sold it for me was his his claw. You throw you throw a cybernetic ion claw, and it's just Kano. And it's just Kano. Okay, Puffer Fish. I hate Puffer Fish, Sonya. He he was. If you saw Black Panther, he was kind of yoked in that okay. movie. Okay, I... he had the salt and pepper hair. He had the accent. You throw a you just throw a cybernetic eye on him, and it's just Kano. I will give you that, but, and I'll just move right into it. I see Andy Serkis more as Goro. Like, mm. I'm, I'm sorry. You want to come off of CGI done correctly. Okay. And, and I took the closest thing to Goro, which is the worst CGI I've seen in a while, mm-hmm. and put him with a personality. And that's going to come across as Snoke. And if you give Snoke two more arms and that's stand funny. him up... Cause you may have Goro on your hands. You know, it's funny because I went to CG route with Goro too. It shouldn't be an actor in a suit. It should be like a, a Incredible Hulk kind of uh, CG, I mean, CG-a-thon. Yeah, it's going to be Why hard not? to pull off Goro. Fine. Right. But my Goro has kind of in your same wavelength is Keith David, the voice of Keith David. He played, he played, um, uh, he was in The Thing. Ah, he played. Uh, he was the. Uh, he was in. Um, he's. Uh, he was Goliath in Gargoyles. That ah. voice. He was in Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, I didn't take it out for air. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I like that. So he has that weight to his voice, and it, I think he can play a graspy, kind of holier than thou, kind of tough ass Goro. But Gollum. I mean Snoke. I mean, when it comes to, like, the Goro. body language, no one's going to defeat Andy Serkis. No, but when you look at those three characters, it's like Goro, now that I'm thinking about it, they're like smaller versions of Goro, each one of them. They're, why, yeah. why, why is every character gray? 
because gray is the universal <laughs> alien love man. Like, it's the universal it's <laughs> the other can't we get somebody what's the weirdest Andy circus can you please play someone blue can, other than you, go in avatar than black or white What's the weirdest color a human being could be that's the most jarring? It's gray. Uh, I actually, Vampires are gray. I actually found uh, in Star Trek the mm-hmm. the little bug thing that was watching Chris Pine and the chick have sex. Yeah. Yellow or something. Yeah. I found that really off-putting. It's like See? a color on a human. Earth tones, okay. man. Earth tones. So let's get into the ninjas. Yep. And the ninjas aren't really actors. No. So I went all guys or technically martial artists. But are also action stars. So they know the role. So let's go with your Scorpion. Who's your Scorpion? Michael Fassbender. What? Yeah, get over here, man. What? Get he's over like, here. What? We're yeah, going, we're I going can totally ab- different places. I, yeah, I can absolutely But he's see. not going to want to be behind that I, mask I, I, I don't time. care what he wants to be. Here's your check, bro. Like, Damn. go behind the uh, mask. Take the body language. Come on out and get over here. Okay. Like, you don't have that much to do. And Michael Fassbender's Magneto? Fine. Dude. But, but but Magneto, I mean, but uh, Scorpion's not a talker, though. He doesn't need to be a talker. He That's just why he just voice him over. He, I'm not going to voice him over. He's mm, not talking. Fair enough. I, I, I just need the body language. I need someone who can pull off those moves. It's Hugo Weaving and V for Vendetta, right? But then Hugo Weaving was acting so much through his voice in that, that it was you saw it was Hugo. Right. But all I'm saying is, is that when I think about Sub Zero and his role in Mortal Kombat. Okay, that's. I was thinking more about this movie. If I was to remake this movie in a white room, oh no, I'm with this voiceless Mortal Kombat. Okay, see th- for a, a reboot, and I want these characters with with Blumhouse see? doing it. Yes, okay, see, okay, I I went with a different direction. Uh, mm-hmm. My Scorpion is. Michael Owalis, he was the main character in The Raid. Guy doesn't have to say anything. Yeah. He's a badass. He's yeah. Indonesian action star. He'll give a different flavor. Because all of my all my ninjas have different fighting styles from different countries. Yes. So they're not so cookie cutter. So my scorpion, he has that visceral, will punch your mouth into a desk and crack your spine kind of fighting style. Very close quarters. And just throw a voice, just have the original voice actor from the game. Get over here. Have him be, have him just voice him over. That's your scorpion. Okay. We went, we went different places. So, okay. so, so that's cool. Your sub zero. My sub zero is another unknown, but the guy, for those who know him, the guy is a freaking beast. And that's Scott Atkins. He's very unknown. No, He's an name. American uh, martial artist. He was in movies like the undisputed and he was in Dr. Strange oh, for a split second. Go. But the guy can fight his ass off. He's like, he's one of the new age kind of martial artists. Like, he has some UFC ties to him, but he is a beast. And I think that for the sake of this movie, for Mortal Kombat 1, directed by Brad Bird, you want an action star who can carry the fight. And I want bomb ass fight scenes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, end of the day, I want sick ass fight scenes and beautiful ass locations. Absolutely. And, and Scott it- Atkins will beat the shit out of anybody. And, and put up a good fight and have good choreography. I went with uh, Cumberbatch, bro. It's what? Doctor Strange, man. Oh, Are you freaking kidding me? He's not gonna be able to do the moves. What do you mean he can't do the moves? He's not gonna be able to do the moves. He, there's, there's, there's only one fight scene with Luke Kane. Let's, let, let's go. I want the moves to be nuts, let, 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 though. Let's, let's call this a day, though. These fight moves, this choreographing is not. But for our remake. I want sick ass Wu Ping. For your acting. your remake, fine. We're going in different directions. Remake, I want you know. You want acting, acting. Yes, fine. someone who can pull you know a big globe of ice and throw it and make it look convincing. See, I want what these I guys. saw from Cumberbatch in Infinity War, throwing crap around, okay, and warping crap. No, I want that for Sub Zero. Interesting. You Interesting. can teach someone how to throw a kick, bro. Inter- no, you. Uh, mm- Hey, I mm. look, look over to your left. I have martial art belts. You yeah. can teach you can you teach, teach anybody. So I don't want to hear that. I, 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 fine. All right. We're making different movies. We're and making I love different it. movies. And I have I love Emily it. Blunt. Right. Okay? Right. I have Emily Blunt. So I have my badass. We're going horror. I just need two dudes who can make it look convincing and not uh, say anything. Who's your reptile? Reptile. 
Oh, you know what? I don't think I cast Reptile. That's fine, because I can sub in mine. All right. My Reptile is Tony Ja. That's funny. That's funny, right? That really is really funny. He doesn't have to say much. He can absolutely. He's a completely different fighting style. Why don't you want Tony Shaw saying too much? Because I want them to be able to just, I want want their strengths to shine. And that's what I'm saying about Sub-Zero and Scorpion. I don't need, for the sake of this movie, I don't need them to be, that's what I mean. That's what the Trinity's for. But their, but their famous moves need to be, their CGI moves. But these these guys can still carry weight when it right. comes to talking. I can see Tony Jaw jumping around doing snake style, oh, beating the shit out yeah, of Luke to- I can totally see Tony yeah. Jaw doing going nuts. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. All three ninjas have all three fighting styles, all three personalities. Who's your Jax? Michael Jai White. I want John Boyega. That's fine. John Boyega's coming up. He's a young actor. He can grow into the role. He actually, He's kind of he, cut. You put him with a box cut, he kind of looks like the Detroit movie. And I wouldn't mind an English-sounding Jax. No, Makes sense. They're like Interpol. I want Michael Jai White because I just want him in my... I want him in everything. Yeah, all right. Martial artist. And I get it. he still looks like he's 20. The guy just doesn't age. He's ripped to shit. He's a legit, legit martial artist. Legit. Give him Jax. Legit. All right. And, and who's... And lastly, I don't know. Who did you cast as your cameo Shao Kahn? Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Clancy Brown for The Voice. Because I want it to be CG, too. I want it to be CG, and I it, like, but I don't. I want the like light CG, so I want the uh, rock in in that in that, but then like some CG elements because I believe the rock can absolutely one hundred percent pull off. Who do we get in Annihilation? I don't remember some the guy from X Files. Yeah, like he, not big enough. Fine, that's the problem. Not big. Shell Khan is stupid, weird. Juggernaut size and dude. The Rock is stupid, weird. Yeah. He's just a little if short. If I can pick any human being that breathes to be Shao Kahn, it would probably be the Mountain from uh oh god from freaking oh, uh, Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. That oh, god. fucking god. That dude is. But yours massive. is more acting. So in the rain can act. And in the face, I see Shao Kahn in that face. If I'm you totally put in the fine with CGI. that. Mine's is more action, so I would have. The mountain be the body, and Clancy Brown, Clancy Brown be the VL. There you go. And let's 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 tally up our movies here. My movie costs like I'm gonna keep it to like a seventy million dollar budget. I want my movies to be. I want my movie to be Fact, stupid. Infinity like War. Two hundred fifty million. I want my movie to be like three, four hundred million. Dollars. Yeah, I don't want to do it. that. That's want, too much pressure. I want nuts. I want I want it to be nuts. I want I want to see Outworld. I want to be able to breathe. I want to be able to smell it. And, you know, that's why I went to Bl- Blumhouse, because I want to keep it grounded, but get some horror so... and really good acting. And, and Like, you know... my movie, would, it's, the difference between our movies is your fatalities will be shown, mine's will be cut away. Yeah. But at the same time, my fight scenes will be better, but your acting will be better. Right? It is what it is. Well, but they're both see. Mortal Kombat movies. Hollywood. Call us. Call us. We got it ready we, for we, you. We have it, and I will take very, very minimal dollars. Now, <laughs> <I'm> right. <laughs> On a scale from one to five, mm-hmm. zero being Freddy Got Fingered, five being freaking The Godfather, where do you rate Mortal Kombat 1995? On that scale, I rate it as repeatable, watchable every single time it's on. It's one of those ones that when you see it and it's on TBS, you're like, oh, I can't really flip past this. I can't I'm just, fall asleep. I'm, I'm just going to sit Kombat here on. and watch Mortal Kombat for the hundredth and ten times. So, mm-hmm. you know, film wise, it's definitely not a five, but I mean, that's got to rank for something. Man. It's a solid three for me. Like, if I'm being real, yeah. it's entertaining as hell. I watch it every time it comes on. The moment you turn it on, you're in. But is it masterpiece cinema? No, mm-hmm. it's not supposed to. Mm-mm. That's not what it's built for. But for what it does, it's a 4.5. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of the macro of the nerdiverse, it's a, it's a 3.5 at best. The acting's not spot on. The graphics are shoddy. But it's, it's, it's a product of his time. Your soul is mine. No! no! Mortal okay. Combat. Like, exactly. You, it's, know, you can't. Like, what, what are you going to do? You not geek out. What are you going to do? Right? You not time, geek out every so. time you see it. 
So, what are your last thoughts about this film? Final uh, it was thoughts. A great rewatch. Uh, actually, I want to say I think it got better with time because mm-hmm. you know the older I get, the less I want in a movie. You know, mm-hmm. I only need an Infinity War. You know, once or twice a year. Yeah, something that's you know low budget and you know putting on the entertainment factor. I'm good with that at this stage. Man, I feel I totally echo your sentiment. This is a time capsule movie. Like with Back to the Future and freaking Home Alone, where it just takes you to a time in your life. And no matter how old you get, no matter how good the graphics get, no matter how many Infinity War billions and Spider-Man Homecomings come out, this still holds up to those movies. Without a doubt. Because it's timeless. And this movie is way better than Spider-Man 2, 3, The Amazing Spider-Man. Now that you mention it, I will watch Mortal Kombat over it. I'll watch Mortal Kombat over any of those, unfortunately. Iron Man 3. X-Men 3. uh, X-Men 3. I'll take that. Thor the Dark World. If you want to do like a a, fight, what's that? Celebrity fight, cinema Uh, fight, whatever it's called. Celebrity death match. Like, yeah, I will put Mortal Kombat up against quite a few. uh, And it just holds up. Marvel movie. It's a fine wine. But I also want to ask, did, did we ever get a Street Fighter versus Mortal Kombat game? No, because we, there, the, there's, a, there's an answer to this, but it's bootleg. Is that there is a Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter game, but it is one bootleg, two illegal, and three runs like shit. If you, in the back alleys of cons in video game stores in the internet if you whisper Mortal Kombat versus more versus um, Street Fighter you'll find something and it'll run but it's the worst piece of shit unbalanced piece of shit in the world and it's absolutely pirate bay you know illegal ladies Companies and, will never come to terms with that shit ladies and gentlemen if you find yourself in the back alley of a con <laughs> <laughs> Ask for Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat versus Street Street I did Fighter. not know that. I I will. Uh, and for those who are really MK in there, versus SF. Look up Sailor Moon and the Seven Balls as well. Actually, don't look that up. I was don't like, look that up. Dude, no, 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 that didn't sound that's like that's in the back that's alley gonna, as well. Yeah, it's back alley as well. That's Where, back what, alley what's the well. Hogwarts? Um, um, the the alley called the um, shoot. I'm, I suck at Harry Potter. Yeah, all right, dude. fair enough. So do I. So, at any rate, thank you for having me. It's been great talking to MK Mortal Kombat with you. Absolutely. So, uh, Brian, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Brian J. Wash, on Instagram at B. Washington, and on YouTube at Brian Washington. Absolutely. If you like this content, and if you're listening to this, you may be a Patreon subscriber. And Patreon. at the Patreon. And at the inexpensive price of five bucks a, a month, that is less than what you pay for lunch, you will get all of our exclusive MOTN content, which includes our movie reviews, such as this one, MOTN Top Tens, and also our MOTN Cinema, where we do riff tracks on movies that are either amazing or silly. Uh, you can always find this podcast at MasterTheNerdiversecast.com. That is our website where you can actually listen to older episodes. And visit our Patreon, where you can join us, like I said, once again. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Spotify. I've been your host, Mike G. And I will always ask you to look towards the skies. Look towards the skies.